Can you hear me now? <laughs> okay. Can you? Yes, hello, Thai. <laughs> I actually did do that for, I think, my first uh, episode and ended up, uh, one of my first episodes ended up reading for about an hour and a half. Had no idea, but I wasn't picking it up. Um, how are my music levels? Is that okay now? I still can't hear it, but I'm hoping it's okay. Uh, no, luckily I hadn't started reading just yet. I was talking about my uh, podcast and fan fiction. The music is really loud. Okay. Compared to the voice. We're going to take that shit all the way down. <laughs> That's so weird that I cannot hear a single thing. Mm hmm. Hmm. Okay, so I'm just. I'm gonna top it out there. I'll take it down to an absolute five. Any better? Any better? Um. I was like, I think she's reading, yeah. <laughs> Well, luckily I hadn't started because usually I dawdle a lot. So it's really good that I hadn't started reading because that would suck. Um, <laughs> but no, uh, I was just talking about um, how I have a fan fiction podcast. This is fine. The music is barely there, but honestly, it's fine. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Because <laughs> last time I had it up little less than these levels and I couldn't hear it look read it looking back on it so I'm like I don't know I don't know how to do this <laughs> thank you so much um oh the things work you know what thank you so so much because that's the first um yay hi <laughs> those are the first emojis that I've gotten and to know that it works is really freaking exciting <laughs> So yeah, so I was um uh on here we read I read Don May. So uh BL gay romance fiction. Uh but I also uh got my start in fan fiction. So I have an audio fan fiction podcast, Sarah's Audio Fan Fictions, and it's on Spotify and and wherever you get your uh, your podcast. It's freaking everywhere. Um but I was just talking about how I just finished this really freaking excellent one. It's still currently in progress and I just really desperately wanted to share how flipping good it was. <laughs> so it's it's a Yuri on Ice fan fiction. So if you don't like um uh BL stories, you're in the wrong place. <laughs> But um, I just finished reading this and it covers a lot of my favorite tropes and it does it really frigging well. And it only has 19, I shouldn't say only because it's a massive amount of words. Like these are really big chapters. Uh, let me, I'm going to, I'm going to shamelessly plug it. Here it is here. Let me see if I can. Uh, but yeah, so I just finished, like this was the one. It was one of those stories where you wake up or you realize that you've been reading too long when you hear birds outside your window. So it took me a... So um, I... And it's been a very long time since a fic has made me pull an all-nighter. But this is Eternity Eternity Will Be Born From Hope. And it's really, really friggin' good. Um, I'm already currently in the pro process of reading an epic length fic on my um uh podcast uh so i don't really want to do another epic length theory fic i've got a lot of other fics that people are asking for um but yeah two of my absolute favorite tropes is one everyone loves yuri kotsky and i freaking love those and also time travel don't at me Time travels are really good if they're done right. And this one is definitely done right. So, yes, you will absolutely. Oh, yeah, you said the word. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yes, I absolutely 100% recommend this story. If you like um, 
badass Yuri Kotsky. Like, he's just awesome, and you love him, and you're going, yes, my cinnamon bun. Um, my cinnamon roll. Uh, and little baby Yuri, uh, he makes a great appearance. It's great characterization. They're a little OOC, a little bit, but they tie it in so excellently that you're like, it's still believable, and I love it. So very highly recommend this fic, which I, I oh, and uh, I should say, the author is still currently updating it. So I don't know if she's doing it by month or by week. I think earlier she was doing it when she first started this, she was doing it by week. But chapter 18 was, I think from her author notes, was done in February. And then this one was just recently. But she says that she has two chapters ready to go. So it could be week, it could be monthly. I don't know, but I'm I'm here for it. <laughs> okay, so that's my shameless plug of... Absolutely. If you like Yuri on Ice, go read, go read this fic. It will consume you for the next, well, don't pull an all-nighter. <laughs> if you don't pull any all-nighters, it'll consume you for about two weeks, depending on reading speed. All right, so I'm going to take a little sip, and then we're going to dive into this because it's really, really good. I hope that in this reading, I can portray how cute these, the two of these two are together. Um, just to recap, if you don't know, um, this is married thrice to assaulted, <laughs> married thrice to assaulted fish. We're on chapter seven. So far, the main character, uh, Lin Ching Yu has been married off to Lu Wan Cheng, who is the son of a rich noble family. And he's, Lu Wan Cheng is dying. The son that uh, he was married off to. Uh, he's dying. He's always been sickly. And so the emperor in his infinite wisdom, or the empress actually, because she's like related. We don't know that yet. You don't know that yet. Spoilers. Um, she, the empress goes and strikes a deal to the national teacher. I think he's called. How can we save this person? How can I save him? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, the Empress goes, how can we save this person? And the uh, the national teacher says, gives her a date. And it's like some March 11 or something. It's, I don't know. She gives her a date. Find the person who has this birthday. And there's a special kind of ceremony where a young lord or whoever is married in order to help stave off, they believe, the evil spirits that are causing the illness and help the person to live longer. Now, Lin Ching Yu, our main, main character, uh, oh, sorry, Lu Wan Cheng is the salted fish in this. And if you don't know, salted fish is a term for someone who just, like, lazy, layabout, doesn't want to do anything, not going to lift a finger, uh, like, can't be bothered with life, just leave me alone, I want to sleep, one of those. Uh, and Lu Wan Cheng, or sorry, Lin Ching Yu, is our... He was studying to take the doctor's examination. He wanted to follow in his father's, st foot, father's footsteps. He's very driven, and he's a doctor. He's incredibly intelligent, but he's so petty and spiteful and bitchy that you absolutely love him. So he is, honest to goodness, one of my absolute favorite favorite characters. Um, they have also firmly established that Lin Qingyu and Lu Wancheng, according to him, are not cut sleeves. So they're saying they're not gay. But Lu Wancheng already has a crush on Lin Qingyu, so it's very, very cute. Anyways, um, sorry, I'm getting overexcited and I'm shaking. Wait just one moment. Sorry, sorry, I had to blow my nose. I got too excited. Okay. <clears throat> if at any point you have any questions about the story or what something means or terminology, anything like that, absolutely pop it in the um, chat and let me know. And I'll do my best to answer and, and kind of catch you up because I know not everyone started this at the beginning. Okay. Press. <laughs> Chapter 7. I beg you, don't torment me. Once they finished packing up, 
Lin Qingyu and Luan Chang took their leave of Father Lin and Mother Lin to return to the Nanan Hu resident mansion. I will lurk it. <laughs> Thank you for lurking. I do appreciate it. I lurk all the time. I'm I'm an awful subscriber on Twitch. I have like ten favorite VTubers, and I don't. I'm I lurk. Everyone in the Lin residence saw them off at the gate of the residence. Luan Chang got into the carriage first so that Lu Qi, Lin Qingyu could say goodbye to his family. Although the Lin residence and the Nanan Hu mansion were both in the capital, it was not easy for the Xiaojun of a noble family to go back to his natal family. According to the rules, he must at least get the permission of his husband's mother, the C-word, the, <laughs> the number of times he could visit his parents could be counted on one's fingers. Mother Lin's eyes were whoa, okay. Mother Lin's eyes were rimmed in red because of her reluctance to let him go. Then Ching He Then Ching He held his brother's hand and refused to let go. However, the most emotional one was Huan Tong, who had grown up with Lin Ching Yu. When Lin Ching Yu got married, Huan Tong wanted to follow him to the Nananhu mansion. For the sake of his future prospects, Lin Qingyu forced him to stay in the Lin residence. Huan Tong had neither, neither father nor mother, but by the time he could form memories, he had already been sold to the Lin residence. He grew up knowing only to follow the young master and to serve the young master. Without Ching Yu in the house, he didn't know what he should do. He spent his days feeling muddle-headed, and he seemed to have lost his reason for living. With much difficulty, he had endured, looking forward to Lin Ching Yu's return to the residence. Now that he was leaving, tears flowed from his eyes and snot came out his nose. He wanted so badly to follow Lin Ching Yu back to the Hu Mansion. He even asked Mother Lin to speak for him. Right now, you don't have anyone who you can trust in the Hu Mansion. You better take Huan Tong with you. That way, your father and I can feel a little more at ease. Lin Qing Yu weighed the matter over and over. Finally, he said, Huan Tong, pack up and get in the carriage. Huan Tong burst into a smile amidst his tears. Lin Qing Yu did not... Lin Qing Yu got into the carriage and briefly told Luan Chang about Huan Tong's matter. Luan Chang gave an absent-minded smile. This is a happy, this is a happy event. The Blue Wind Pavilion is now f is now full of girls. The Yin Aura is too heavy. Lin Qing Yu sighed. I just didn't want him to be trapped in the inner house like I am. Luan Chang disagreed. What's wrong with being trapped in the inner house? For a person with big ambitions like you, trapped may be the right word. But for me, please let me stay in the inner house my whole life. Thank you. Lin Ching Yu turned his head. People who walk different paths cannot make plans together. The carriage started to move, and through the window, Lin Ching Yu watched his family's figures gradually recede in the distance. Goodbye, Guga. Then Lin Ching He waved his little hand. Seeing Lu Huan Chang, he then plucked up his courage and said, Goodbye, Wang Cheng Guga. Lu Huan Chang smiled. Goodbye, little Ching He. Closing the carriage window, he said to Lin Ching Yu, Your brother seems to like me very much. Lin Ching Yu nodded. Ching He has always had the bad habit of judging people by their appearance. I've thought of many ways to correct it, but it is a pity that he still only likes to get close to people with outstanding looks. The corners of Luan Chang's lips perked up. It seems I had heard someone compliment me on my good looks. Then Ching Yu glanced at him and said, You're indeed passable. Although he couldn't agree at all that Luan Cheng's behavior, he could barely deign to look upon that face of his. 
Liu Wenjiang was startled, as though he wasn't expecting Lin, <laughs> Lin Qingyu to praise him. Even if Lin Qingyu himself didn't think it was praise, he was just telling the truth. Unexpectedly, at this time, Lu Wenchang instead became humble. I'm overwhelmed, oh number one beauty. Lin Qingyu asked, who's the number one beauty? You. Lin Qingyu frowned. Such an assertion cannot be made. The world is so big and full of extraordinary things. Who could guarantee that, they've ha that they have met all the people in the world? Since no one has, there is no means to compare. Lin Qingyu smiled lightly. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Liu Wenchang smiled lightly and said, Oh, but there is someone who has seen everyone in the world, and she told me. Lin Qingyu naturally wouldn't believe such nonsense. Absurd. Liu Wencheng's smile remained undiminished. He stroked his chin and said, She also told me that this face of mine is, in the whole book, I, I mean, in the entire Daiyu, among the top five? I think it's pretty average, though. It's far more inferior than my face before. He was startled at once again. <laughs> oh. He has started in once again on his long-winded nonsense. Lin Qingyu closed his eyes to rest, cutting off Lu Wencheng's voice from his ears. Barring an unforeseen incident, Liang Shi should already know about Lu Wencheng's trip to the Lin residence with the five carriages of gifts. He had no idea what her thoughts were about it, and whether she would use this as an opportunity to pick a fight. In theory, this matter had nothing to do with him, and if Leng Shi wanted to look for someone, she should look for her son. However, on the surface, Leng Shi has always spoiled Lu Wancheng. It was, it was Lin Qingyu's guess that she wouldn't look to reason things out with Lu Wancheng. Tomorrow, when Lin Qingyu got to greet Liang Shi, he will probably be given a friendly warning through oblique innuendo. Thinking of this, Lin Qingyu felt irritated. Once they arrived at the Nananhu mansion, a sleepy Lu Wencheng was carried out of the carriage. Wan Tong pushed Lu Wencheng, following behind Lin Qingyu. He looked around him curiously. Excuse me. When they were nearing the Blue Wind Pavilion, Lu Wencheng was almost awake. Yawning, he said, It seems like we've gone the wrong way. This was clearly the way back to... This was clearly the way back to the Blue Wind Pavilion. Lin Ching Yu said to Han Tong, Don't pay attention to him. Let's continue on. Liu Wencheng... Liu Wencheng placed his elbow on the armrest of the wheelchair, supporting his forehead on his hand. According to the rules, now that we've returned from the Lin Residence... Shouldn't we go and pay our respects to my mother before returning to our rooms? Then Ching Yu paused and looked back at him. According to the rules, you should get up early every day and play your and pay your respects to her. According to the rules, you should get up early every day and pay res your respects to her. But have you ever gone? I haven't, Liu Wencheng said, using all his willpower. All the more reason why I should go now that I'm awake. Lin Qing Yu was suspicious. Normally, whenever Liang Shi came to visit the Blue Wind Pavilion, Liu Wencheng would either simply go through the motions and exchange a few perfunctory words with her, or say that he was unwell and that it was inconvenient to meet guests. He has never gone to pay his respects to her, even once. One could very well imagine the outcome of this kind of relationship between mother and child. Today, Liu Wencheng was ill and he had been away from the house for the entire day. He had also sat inside the carriage for a long time. He was obviously very tired. 
Yet at this time, he actually offered to pay his respects to Lang Shi. Could it be... Lin Jingyu had a vague guess. He said, Young Master Hu is very filial. Let us make our way there, then. The two arrived at Liang Shi's courtyard. Liang Shi had just finished having a late night snack. When she heard that they had come to greet her, she some she had someone prepare some refreshments. Sorry, just a moment, I gotta take a drink. Lin Qingyu pushed, pushed Luan Chang in to greet her. Seeing that Luan Chang's complexion was not good, that exhaustion could be seen from the corners of his brows and eyes, she said, distressed, Although it is a, only a matter of course for a husband to accompany his wife for her visit back to her parents' house, Wang Qi is ill. I can never remember this bitch's name. Or not a name, a uh, voice. Okay, I think... I want simpering. Although it is only a matter of course for a husband to accompany his wife for her visit back to her parents' house, Wang Ji is ill, after all. Even if he doesn't go, the Lin residents would surely understand. Lu Wencheng smiled and said, Xing Yu said the same. He even set off without telling me to stop me from going. Mother, do you think he should be punished? Lin Ching Yu raised his brows. Liu Wan Cheng really did come for this matter. Liang Shi looked at Liu Wan Cheng at Lin Ching Yu. Revealing no trace of her on her expression, she paused and said softly. Ching Yu was thinking of your health. What is there to punish? Luan Chang chuckled and said, Since mother has said so, then he won't be punished. But it should not be taken as a precedent. Can you give me some time alone with mother, Ching Yu? Lin Ching Yu's feelings were con <laughs> Lin Ching Yu's feelings were complicated. Hmm. Liu Wencheng chatted a bit more to Lang Shi. He then seemingly inadvertently mentioned the return gifts. Xing Yu's return gifts were taken from my birth mother's dowry, so I didn't tell mother in advance. Surely mother doesn't mind. Liang Shi smiled. She took a sip of the tea and said, Those were left to you by your biological mother. Naturally, it's how it's dealt with is up to you. <clears throat> Liang Shi was not Lu Wen Chang's biological mother. Lin Ching Yu had heard of it earlier. Liu Wen Chang's biological mother was Nan and Hu's original spouse, the formal daughter of the capital's most influential official, Wen Gong Wen Gugong. Wen Gugong has two daughters. One married into the Nan and Ho mansion, and the other was the current empress. Again, sorry for the spoilers. Liu Wencheng was born into the Hu mansion and also had a prominent maternal family. He had a promising future. It was a pity that his biological mother died due to excessive bleeding during the difficult delivery. Related to his premature birth, he was born frail and sickly, and was judged at birth to not live past twenty. Nan and Hu lived his, loved his eldest son dearly, and exhausted all efforts to treat him. He didn't dare to train him as strictly as one would a normal illegitimate heir. Later, in order to have someone manage the affairs of the mansion, he man married Liang Shi, as his second wife, and became the father of a daughter and another son. 
Liu Wencheng has been, had been raised next to the Liang Shi since he was a child, and Liang Shi put him first in everything. Though she was not his biological mother, she was even better than a biological mother. At least, that's how the matchmaker put it to Lin Qingyu before he got married. After returning Liang Shi's place, Liu Wencheng was almost at his limit. After taking his medicine, he lay down flat on the bed. Lin Qingyu also restored, rested on the Liu Han. The two were still separated by the screen with the Mandarin ducks playing in the water. Lin Qingyu brought back all the things that happened today and couldn't help asking. Very sorry, that spooked me. That was my automatic fish tank feeder. <laughs> <clears throat> Lin Ching Yu thought back on all the things that happened today and couldn't help asking. Young Master Hu, are you asleep? Di Wan Cheng's voice came from behind the screen. Not yet. Why? Care to have a nighttime talk by candlelight with me? Lin Ching Yu said slowly, Actually, you're not a fool. Of course I'm not, Li Wencheng said with a laugh. What were, what were you thinking? When I was studying, I always got first place. Lin Ching Yu didn't believe it. Could a bag of lazy bones like you uh, even get first place? Li Wencheng's voice was fading. Mm. Being tired of learning and getting first place aren't in conflict. How do you figure that? There are some things that I hate to do, but I know that doing it would bring me benefits, so I force myself to do them. This is the case with studying. This was also the case with paying my respects. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Ching Yu thought for a while, and then asked, But you've been laid up in bed since you were born. So how could you have had the chance to study with others? Lin Qingyu waited for a while, but when he didn't hear a response from Lu Wancheng, he knew that he had fallen asleep. Past the first month, the days were getting warmer. Winter, the most difficult time for the... Pa okay, you know, I'm going to pause, take a drink, because that's a screen break. And then I forgot to put it again. I'm so sorry for how raspy my voice is. I don't know why. A sec, I'm gonna mute my mic for a sec. Okay, okay, I think that's a little, I hope that's a little better. Knock on wood. Don't actually, because I hit the mic. Let's see here. Okay. Page break. Yeah. Past the first month, the days were getting warmer. Winter, the most difficult time for the patient, was finally over. As the days warmed up, Liu Wencheng's body was obviously getting better. He didn't need to rely on a wheelchair to get in and out. Aside from sleeping, he also liked t taking a walk with his pet birds. He liked looking at the flowers, tohu, watching plays. 
In short, he liked all the things fun that didn't need him to move. On this day, Lin Ching Yu was in the study, dispensing medicine according to the prescription. The prescription was the one written by his father the day of his visit. He wanted to figure out the theory behind it. As for whether to use it for Lu Wan Chang, he hadn't yet decided. In this prescription, several of the ingredients were toxic and would cause extra pain to the patient after taking them. He wondered if there were other relatively milder ingredients that could replace them. A crisp bird cry interrupted Liu <laughs> Lin Ching Yu's thoughts. This sound was mellow and pleasant to listen to. It would be a pleasure to listen to it during his leisure time. But hearing it when he was trying to concentrate was annoying. Lin Ching Yu didn't want to bother with it at all. He closed his eyes and tried to engross himself in his work, but the bird cry was incessant. Top it off with the bursts of laughter and Lin Ching Yu couldn't bear it anymore. He got up and opened the window and said coldly to a certain someone who was taking his pet bird out for a walk, Young Master Hu, please control your bird. Liu Wencheng heard his voice and looked back. He had a golden bird cage in his hand. Besides Huan Tong, he was surrounded by a group of orioles and swallows, all little maids of the Blue Wind Pavilion, attracted by the singing of the Hua... Uh, Hua Mei in the birdcage. Cute! <laughs> Sorry, I was curious. I wanted to know what that looked like. No idea what it sounds like, but that's what it looks like. That's what a Hua Mei is. Sorry. <laughs> I wasn't actually expecting it to pop up on the screen like that. I forgot it was there. We'll definitely have to remember that for next time. <coughs> what is that? Okay. Behind him was a golden peach blossom tree that had bloomed early. It's Dr. Lin! Li Wen Chang talked to him through the window. The spring breeze blew, and his and his tail end of his tone was full of, and the tail end of his tone was full of smiles would you like to play with my bird lin ching lu wen cheng's face was still morbidly pale emaciated and bony he had a lazy and casual bearing with a handsomeness akin to tipsy elegance however it gave Lin Ching Yu the sense of a different kind of breath. He had the inexplicable feeling that Liu Wen Cheng shouldn't have this too weak to even stand up against the wind kind of look. Rather, he should be a young man lying low on horseback with a story full of red sleeves beckoning. I'm busy, Lin Ching Yu said. Can you keep the noise down? Li Wen Chang said, I'm sorry, but you've been locked away in the study for most of the day already. You should take a break. Huan Tong agreed. That's right, young master. The sun feels so good today. You could come and listen to the birds sing with us. The pursuit of petty pleasures thwarts, thwarts high aims. Sorry, I won't be able to keep you company. Lin Ching Yu finished speaking and closed the window with a slam. Liu Wen Chang said regretfully, Your young master can be boring sometimes. Huan Tong and Liu Wen Chang were playing together while he still kept his family's young master firmly at the top of his heart. Sorry, I read that wrong. Huan Tong and Liu Wen Chang were playing together but he still kept his family's young master firmly at the top of his heart. That's because we're in the ho Ho Mansion. When he was in the Lin residence, the young master wasn't like this. Liu Wen Chang thought of how Lin Qingyu had fallen. 
had followed his mentor to study away from home for many years and said, You're right. After that, he smiled again. But even if he is dull and boring, I think... Before he could finish his words, a violent crash suddenly came from the study. Everyone hurriedly pushed the door and entered, only to see, only to see Lin Ching Yu leaning against the bookshelf, with several medical books scattered around, along with a fallen wooden stool. Huan Tong said anxiously, Young Master, are you okay? Lin Ching Yu said calmly, I'm fine. I just accidentally stepped on air when I was putting down the book. He looked very uncomfortable when he saw how many people crowded around the door. Have you... have you all nothing to do? Liu Wen Cheng supported his arm and said with a smile, Don't be shy. <clears throat> Don't be shy. A falling beauty is still beautiful. I didn't fall. I just sprained my ankle. Lin Ching Yu couldn't help letting out a, sm a low groan when the sharp pain hit. Help me to the bedroom. There's medicine there. How can you walk like this? I'll carry you there, Li Wen Chang said. Lin, Ooh. Lin Ching Yu said in surprise, You? What has gotten into Li Wen Chang? Has he suddenly forgotten about his weak body? Lu Wen-Chang slid his hands to his waist and took him up into his arms. With this embrace, Lu Wen-Chang's face changed slightly, and his body shook abruptly. He narrowly missed toppling over along with the person in his arms. Fortunately, Huan Tong was beside him to hold him steady. Lin Qing Yu turned pale from the pain. I'm begging you, don't toss me about anymore. Liu Wen Chang has never been as flustered as he was now. I'm not. I'll do it, young Master Hu. I'm strong. Liu Wen Chang watched as Huan Tong easily carried Lin Qing Yu on his back and quickly ran to the bedroom. He suddenly gave a low laugh and said, Damn it. The author has something to say. Can't hold your wife? Are you even a man? Laugh out loud. <laughs> Whew. I think these chapters are getting shorter. That felt a lot shorter than usual. Even with my... Oh no, it's been an hour. I'm a slow reader, apparently. <laughs> I love this chapter title. <laughs> this is taken directly from the book, so the author actually wrote that. Hmm. <laughs> It occurs to me that I haven't expressed what this book is actually about since the very first chapter. Um, so just to recap, not to recap, but to explain. Um, married Thrice to a Salted Fish is a... What do they call it? Isekai. Is it, is it an Isekai? Yeah, technically. Um, it's a story about Liu... Not Liu and, yeah, Luan Chang uh, has been transmigrated into Luan Chang's body. So he's not actually Luan Chang. We don't know who he is yet. Uh, but he was transmigrated into this person's body. And this person, obviously, it's a book, as we learned from earlier. So he's got that. He knows everything that's going on. He's omnip omnipotent. Omnipotent? Not impotent. That comes later. <laughs> Sorry. Spoilers. Spoilers. Um, I should uh, point out, I have read the translation up to, I want to say, around chapter 20 or so, but nothing after that. So after that, it'll be us exploring it together. Yeah, so let me just breathe a little bit. Take a few deep breaths, get a little hydrated, and then I'll start on <laughs> I fucking can't hold you. I'm really <coughs> funny today, and I don't know why. I'm wondering how the music levels are. 
I would hope they're not too high. But I'd like to get it so that we can actually hear both. But I did think that my reading, or that my mine was uh, too low when I went back to hear it. When I look back on the recording. But I don't know. I'm using a Beacon mic and the Beacon Mix Create. And the Beacon app is absolute shit. So I cannot actually open the app to adjust the levels. I have to use the actual hardware that they give me. So it's very tricky to figure out my levels when I can't see or hear what you're hearing. Um, <clears throat> also, uh, one more little plug. After this finishes... I wish I could track my hand movements because I move my hands a lot. After this wraps up, after this stream, um, all of my episodes get posted onto the YouTube page. It's under the same name of the library. So um, if you miss any episodes or if any episodes on Twitch get deleted, because I know that they, they're only on for a certain amount of time, you can go over and subscribe to that YouTube channel and they're all there and you can download them or whatever. I'm playing with the idea of posting just the audio for these on to a secondary podcast not sure if there's any um uh audience for that but i know that when i was watching my favorite vtubers who did, did the read-alongs i always wished that i'm like i don't need to see the lip flapping i just want to hear you and i always wished that they had put them onto a podcast or something that i could take with me because Lord knows, walking the dog with your YouTube channel playing just so you can hear it in your pocket very quickly eats up your data. So. So yeah, so I'd love to know if there was any even an audience who would care for that. Alright. I say I'm going to take a break and breathe and then I just ramble. Okay. <laughs> Chapter 8. I fucking can't hold you? Huan Tong carried Lin Ching Yu back into the room and placed him on the Luo Han. Lin Ching Yu then asked him to take out the medicine box from the cabinet and look for the medicine for bruises and sprains. Hua Lu saw that Luan Cheng. Hua Lu saw that Lin Ching Yu was in so much pain that he was bursting out in a cold sweat. She said anxiously, Should I go look for a doctor for Xiao Zhen? Huan Tong took off Lin Ching Yu's shoe and said, What nonsense are you saying? My family's young master is the best doctor there is. Lin Ching Yu poured the potion into his palm and rubbed it on the sprained part. The light medical medicinal fragrance spread through the room. Hua Lu said, Xiao Jun, should I help you rub it? I can massage it for you. No need. Lin Ching Yu endured the pain. Go and get a basin of well water, then soak a handkerchief in it. I will have to apply a cold compress for half an hour after using the medicine. Lin Ching Yu raised his head and saw Luan Chang sitting by the table. His expression, dark. Oh, no, wait. Ah, sorry. I missed a part. Lin Ching Yu rubbed the injured part. He then suddenly felt that the room was too quiet. Where was that person who talked the most? He raised his head and saw Liu Wen Chang sitting up by the table. His expression, dark and unhappy. Thinking about how Liu Wan Chang almost fell, Lin Ching Yu asked, asked him, Are you bruised anywhere? Liu Wan Chang shook his head and said, Is your injury okay? It's nothing serious. It should be all better after resting it for three days. Liu Wan Chang smiled. That's good. Lin Ching Yu said dully, Originally, I only had to rest my sprain for two days, but then you dropped me like that. 
Li Wen Chang hid his face, feeling pain. Don't say it. It's my fault. In order to make up for his fault, Liu Wen Chang generously gave up his wheelchair to Liu Lin Ching Yu. However, Lin Ching Yu didn't appreciate the gesture. He simply had Hua Tong serve him by his side. He had Hua Tong fetch whatever he needed. When walking was unavoidable, he had Hua Tong support him as he did so. Hua Lu was waiting for Liu Wen Chang to drink the medicine when she caught sight of Lin Ching Yu. Lin Jing Yu was slowly walking with one hand on the table and Hua Tong supporting him on his other side. He had on a simple white robe with his long hair falling on his shoulders and his brows furrowed slightly. The image he made caused a pity to rise up in Hua Lu's little girl's heart. Liu Wen Chang asked, drawing out his words, Does he look good? Hua Lu nodded, honestly. He does. An injured Xiao Zhen looks different from how he usually is. Liu Wan Chang looked at Lin Qing Yu and drank the terribly bitter medicine in one go. This is called... <laughs> this is called Battle Damaged Beauty. Once night fell, Lin Qing Yu lay on the Lao Han, reading as usual. Sounds of a body turning over could be heard from time to time on the big bed behind the screen. The noise made it impossible for Lin Ching Yu to read at ease. Normally, Liu Wen Chang could al would already be dead asleep at this time. He had no idea what had gotten into the other today. Hearing another sigh, Lin Ching Yu asked, Young Master Hu, Indifferent to fame and fortune, taking no account of gains or losses, what could possibly make you frown with worry and frown with worry and moan and groan so late into the night? After a period of silence, Luan Chang's figure, slowly sitting up, appeared against the screen. In a miserable and desolate tone, he said, "I can't even fucking." Carry you? Lin Ching Yu. Did anyone else hear that? What is that? Oh, it doesn't show up. Damn it. I got the crickets working <laughs> on my end. I can hear the crickets and I I'm really beginning to hate this whole beacon thing. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> I got crickets. Crickets, crickets, crickets. There you go. Irritated. Liu Wen Chang losing sleep over this kind of thing? Liu Wan Chang said quietly, This is more terrifying than a ghost story. These words roused Lin Ching Yu's curiosity. Where did you get the confidence to think that you could carry me? Liu Wan Chang couldn't understand. Your waist is so thin. You definitely don't weigh that much. How could I possibly not carry you? Lin Ching Yu didn't feel like attending to Liu Wan Chang's inexplicable ego. He said, frankly, With the body you have now, just walking for you too long leaves you gasping for breath. Hua Tong is stronger than you. Young Master Hu, people should know their own limits. It's infuriating! Liu Wan Chang pounded the bed repeatedly. Even Hua Tong could do it, but I can't. Hua Tong has been doing heavy work for many years. In what aspect do you think you're better? Liu Wan Chang angrily got out of bed. In passing, he draped the fox fur robe over his shoulders and walked out from behind the screen. I am taller than him. I'm taller than him. Lin Qingyu put down the book and looked at him. 
Young Master Hu. What? Lin Qing Yu perfectly imitated Liu Wan Cheng's tone. Behave with integrity. Try not to co compete with others. Liu Wan Chang was momentarily at a loss for words. He had completely lost the power to refute. Lin Qing Yu's lips couldn't help curling up at curling up at seeing his defeated expression. Actually, Lin Qing Yu smiled a lot, but most of the time it was a bitter smile or a sneer. It was the first time Lu Wen Chang saw him with a smile like this. Lin Jing Yu was half lying on the Lu Han, Lu Han, under the dim lights with his long strands of hair hanging down on his chest, holding a book in his hand, shaking off all wariness and indifference, and smiling as he quietly watched him. Lu Wen Chang suddenly understood what it was meant by Beauty is bone deep, not skin deep. He couldn't help lowering his voice for fear of disturbing Lu Wen Ch Lin Qing Yu. Are you in pain? Lin Qing Yu shifted his, shifted his attention back to the book. It's fine. Lu Wen Cheng sat down on the edge of the Lu Han and said, You're a patient now too. You're a patient now too. Get onto the bed and sleep. Lin Qing Yu thought that Lu Wan Chang was going to exchange with him. He would get a, he would get the bed and Lu Wan Chang would sleep on the Lu Han. No, your illness is more serious than mine. Lu Wan Chang said as though it were nor natural. So I'll also sleep in the bed. Lin Qing Yu's fingertips paused. He gave a direct refusal. No. Neither of us are gay, so what are you afraid of? Lin Qing Yu calmly turned a page. I'm afraid you're going to trap my hair. Lu Wan Cheng never expected that Lin Qing Yu could use this excuse to reject him, and he couldn't help smiling as he said, But you've never shared a bed with me. What makes you think I'm go I'll get your hair trapped? Because your sleeping posture is terrible. Then try it with me anyway. You'll know once you give it a try. I won't. You're being too much, Lu Wan Chang accused. You shouldn't mix who I am in reality with who I am in your imagination. Lin Qing Yu raised his eyes to look at him. Pretending to be cold and stern, he said, Young Master Hu, if you spout any more nonsense, you better believe I'm going to make you unable to spit out even a single word for the next three days. I believe you, I believe you. Why wouldn't I believe you? Liu Wan Cheng cursed and went back to lie down in his bed. You're the vicious beauty who would dare to attack even the crown prince. What is there that you can't do? Lin Qing Yu's inquiry reached Liang Shi's ear. Oh, sorry. Page break, taking a drink. I know it's coming up in recent in coming chapters. That's why I smile. I love lynching you. <laughs> Once we get into it, I I am curious as to how many comments I'll get with he is my spirit animal. <laughs> Then she knew that's vicious boy. <laughs> Lin Qing Yu's injury reached Liang Shi's ears. Liang Shi then sent a maid to inquire about his condition. This was done simply for the sake of appearances. There was also an unfamiliar maid who came to the Blue Wind Pavilion to deliver some medical plasters to Lin Qing Yu. She said that this was a secret recipe passed down within their Yang, uh, 
Yinang, Yinang's, yeah, passed down within their Yinang's family, and that it had miraculous effects on sprains. Then Ching Yu asked, "Your Yinang?" That would be. Uh, let's see here. That would be Sleeping Moon Jai. Jai's Pan Yanang, the maid said with a smile. Okay, so try that again. That would be the. Yeah. That would be Sleeping Moon Jai's Pan Yanang, the maid said with a smile. Xiao Jin probably has yet to see. <laughs> probably has yet to meet. Among the wealthy families of the capital, Nan and Ho. Hu. Sorry, clearly getting tired. Are we reaching the two? No, we're not even reaching the two hour mark. I don't know why. Getting tired. I don't know. The names really throw me. Clearly, if there are too many names or too many actual Chinese words, I'm trying to remember the rules and how to pronounce certain letter combinations. And so it trips me up. <clears throat> Among the wealthy families of the capital, the nun in whose inner house was considered to be quite sparse. Aside from his wife, Nan and Hu had only two or three concubines. Liang Shi managed them properly, and the, and the concubines knew their place. Although Lin Qing Yu was the Shaoshan, he was still a man, after all. Distinctions are made between the sexes, and apart, fr and apart from celebrating the New Year, he generally wouldn't get to see these concubines face to face. Lin Ching Yu took a sniff of the ointment. It was indeed good medicinal plaster. Good medicinal plaster. But he and Pan Yanang were complete strangers, and he didn't want to owe this favor. Lin Ching Yu was about to refuse when Liu Wan Cheng walked out of the inner hall and spoke for him. And spoke for him. Leave the medicine here. Please thank Pan Yinang for us. Because there were others around, Lin Ching Yu didn't say anything. After the maid left, without waiting for Lin Ching Yu's question, Liu Wan Chang said, Pan Yinang doesn't have any bad intentions. She's timid and honest. You can give her some face. Maybe she'll join your camp in the future. Lin Ching Yu asked, Young Master Ho, has never inquired Young Master Hu has never inquired about the matters of the inner house before. How could you tell who's good and who's bad? Liu Wen Chang veiled his words in half truths and half lies. Because I because I, like Dai Yu's national teacher, can read the stars and predict the future. Then Qing Yu I'm still hitting the fucking cricket button. I, even if you guys can't hear it, I'm hitting the cricket button. Hmm. I'm honestly really pissed that that's not working. <laughs> I can't even describe how pissed I am that it's not working. I'm gonna keep doing it though. But. <laughs> Lin Qing Yu has been married for some time already, and he knew that although Lu Wancheng looked unreliable, he has never been malicious towards him. Among the hundreds of people in the Nananhu mansion, only Lu Wancheng was barely worthy of his trust. How could he not want to get along peacefully with Lu Wancheng? But. Lu Wan Chang could only bring himself to be serious for three minutes before he inexplic before his inexplicable bad habit of making irresponsible remarks reared its head. Then go and read the stars, Lu <laughs> Lin Ching Yu said indifferently, and stop annoying me. Lu Wan Chang simply pretended not to hear Lin Ching Yu's dismissal, and fiddled with the plaster sent by Pan Yin. 
Yin Yang. Yin Yang. Wait, just a sec. Google Sensei! Okay, just a sec. We're asking Google Sensei for this. Just this moment here. You will hear this. I hope it's not too, too loud. It's going to be loud, though. Yi Liang. I can't hear that. Yi Liang. Yi Liang. Yeah, okay. I was, I was saying it close enough. <laughs> Yi Liang. Okay. He said, Do you remember? Do you remember the acupuncture bag that I wanted to give you, but you rejected ruthlessly? It was Pan Yin Yin Yang. Yin Yang. Yin Yang. It was Pan Yin Yang who, who had given that wedding gift. And it was one that she had sewn herself. Then Ching Yu was a little surprised. Is that so? Were Pen Shi's repeated expressions of goodwill towards him truly just an expression of her good intentions? Or did she have ulterior motives? Nin Ching Yu was pondering the matter when someone suddenly held his ankle and lifted it up. He locked eyes with Luan Chang and said, confused, What are you doing? I'm helping you apply the plaster. Nin Ching Yu struggled a little. No need. Let go. Liu Wan Chang held his angle to prevent him from moving, and said with a smile, No need to be polite. Please hold here, I need to let the Yui in. One moment, please. One moment, please. I really should put my Be Right Back page on, because I do have one. I just don't use it. Uh, the Yui's here. <laughs> Sorry. I, I said his name, so he looked over like I was calling him, and I'm not. You will hear some crunching. He, I gave him his favorite bone, which he was too distracted by earlier to actually chew on, so he's going to be enjoying that. So you may hear some crunching. FYI. Oh, excuse me. Liu Wan Chang held his ankle to prevent him from moving and said with a smile, No need to be polite. I've got my plaster sticking skills down pat, and I guarantee that I'll stick them on beautifully. Get off me. Lin Ching Yu used only 70% of his strength and easily broke free from Lu Chang's grip. With, ha with Huan Tong's support, he stalked away. Lu Chang looked down at his hand, grievance filling his eyes, an expression looking as though he were about to suffocate appearing on his face. Lin Ching Yu's sprain healed after three days of recuperation. <laughs> I'm so frustrated with me not putting page breaks in. Is that you whining? Is that someone walking? What is that? <laughs> it's 
not even chewing on his bone is his favorite that he only gets at special occasions when I need him to be quiet. So he's not even chewing it, he's just holding it, carrying it around. You're beautiful. <sighs> Sorry. <clears throat> but just you, you can see Luan Chang getting he's getting some feelings. And I <laughs> and even from the first few chapters you're going he really wants to sleep with him. <laughs> he keeps saying we're not gay, but he really wants to sleep with him. That's that scraping sound is Yui fluffing his bed. We're gonna let him get comfy because he will fluff a little bit more. But yeah, you can clearly see Luan Cheng kind of he's got some feels. I I get the feeling that that lynching you was because we already know that in the book that they've that he's transmigrated into, into from what uh, Li Wan Chang has said, we know that lynching you isn't the protagonist. He wasn't the main character. We don't know who the main character is. I even from what I've read, I have no idea who the main character of this book is supposed to be. But we do know that. Well, it's been implied that the Nana and Hu Mansion is kind of a minor offset family plot point but then Lin Ching Yu is like a he's a running vein plot point character but he's not the protagonist and because he, he says that his how can this you know deadly beauty or whatever he calls him not be the protagonist or something so um I don't know who the protagonist is but you can clearly tell that I think lynching you was probably most definitely uh, Luan Cheng's before he transmigrated into the book his favorite character so and I think it's so cute <laughs> he's like no we should definitely we should totally sleep together I'm not gay but I really want to sleep with you <laughs> and I think that's so cute he's like Luffy who are you trying to fool because <laughs> lynching you's not having any of it Although I do find it interesting, like, is it just pure, uh, force of will that Lin Ching is not willing to share a bed with, uh, Liu Wan Chang? Because he also says earlier, you know, it was no big deal for me to, you know, sleep with or spend the night in the same bed with my fellow students or my, um, master's other apprentices. So he's like, it's not a big deal. I don't really care, but I'm not sleeping with you. And it's not a hate thing, because we've already met uh, Tian Xiongji, Tian, Tian Xiongji, and we know that Lin Qingyu hates him. And he even said that they, you know, they had to share a bed once or twice, or at some point. So I don't know. I'm curious. Is it just because Lin Qingyu doesn't want to sleep with his husband? You can't see him doing bunny ears. Husband. Just out of pure spite, because <laughs> he's not the husband I chose, I'm not sleeping with him, I'm not gay, that kind of thing. Or is it purely, I'm very aware of you, so I'm just going to not. <laughs> I'm curious. I do hope for this, though, that lynching you doesn't turn out to be one of those ones where... You know those characters where they're part of a couple... But one is obviously putting more effort or feels more for the for the other partner than they return. So for instance, um, partner A feels or expresses or gives more love and affection and attention to partner B than partner B reciprocates. And partner B just goes, well, I truly love that person. Like it's all words. There's no actions to back it up. 
I don't think at all that lynching you is going to be like that. But I also don't want him to be, even to a lesser extent, I don't want him to be one of those ones where it's, um, how do I say, where he's cold all the time. My favorite ones are when they're cold to everyone else except their partner. And then with their partner, they just turn into a gooey, fluffy mess. Like that's, that's my favorite. I love it. <laughs> but, uh. I think, I honestly, I'm getting the feeling that that's what lynching you is going to be. He's like, I'm going to kill... He's like, I'm going to kill all these bitches. But you, you help me kill them, you're okay. <laughs> you can be part of my dark evil plots. By the way, it does not get that dark. I shouldn't say that. Uh, up to what I read, he's not... Lynching you is not evil. That's 100%. Lynching you, not evil. He just does the stuff that... You know when people give the shovel talks? Like, oh, if you hurt them, I'll kill you. That kind of thing. Lynching you follows through. <laughs> and that's why we love him. It's not all talk. <laughs> He'll cut a bitch. You don't care. I don't know how strong the mic is if you can pick up his chewing. He's cute though. He's got a wee little mouth, so I like him chewing. Okay, let's get going. Also, turns out I do not have to walk the baby after this. I don't know how if I'll have enough energy for a third chapter, but it'd be cool if I did. We'll see uh, how far this goes. Lynching you sprained and Lynching you sprained healed after three days of recuperation. Liu Wan Chang grew tired of listening to bird song and got a grew tired of listening to bird song and got a mina from who knows where. All right, we're gonna look this up again. Mm, mina. Mina, Mina. Bring up our trusty. Oh yes, yes, yes. I've seen these on um. Uh, what is it called? Um, advanced bravery. Is a sec? I'm looking that up too. Yes, it is. Okay, this one right here. Okay, it's a BL drama series, and it's really fucking good. I thoroughly enjoyed this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to flash it, and then this one. Advanced Bravery, or Advanced Bravely, whatever it is called. I don't know if I'll get in trouble for showing that, but honestly, if you're looking for a good uh, BL, I prefer even the Chinese BL um, uh, dramas over the Thai dramas only because oh hi Sam hi hello how... have you been there for long <laughs> sorry I just noticed that um but yeah so if you've if you're into um uh the actual like real life dramas BL drama it's really good advanced bravely it's one of the first ones I saw and a lot of people say it's crap or that there are better ones, absolutely 100% agree. There are there are better ones, but not not by much, honestly. And the romance in that one and the relationship is so so good, very rewarding. So yes, actually, I want I would love to do an episode one day where we just go through and rate my favorite BL dramas, but like live action dramas, and we could do an audio uh, a um. An anime version as well. I was on before, but couldn't sign on the way home. As long as you're listening, we're just happy to have you. <laughs> That's okay. As long as I'm not talking to myself, I'm happy with it. Um, but yeah, so I may, I may do that. Let me know if that might be something that you'd be interested in, because I, I have there's so many out there that I think don't get the love and the praise that I think they should get, and yes, in Yes, if you're interested, I'd love to share. 
Also, if you want the links where you can download this without paying for it, let me know. I'll hook you up in the DMs. Just saying. Just saying. Totally counterfeit. Don't get me drunk. Okay. Going back to this. We now know what a... Because this bird, it features heavily as part of the, how they the, that main pair get together. And this is very cute. I love you. I love you. Shut up. <laughs> okay. No, because I want to spoil things. And I'm trying my best not to. Because I spoil... I love spoilers myself. And I got to stop. Okay. <laughs> uh, what was I doing? What was I doing? Okay. Yeah, so these birds, these uh, minor birds, they're like... Um, a... Awesome. Okay. <laughs> so we're good. <laughs> so these minor birds, they act a lot like parrots. So they, they imitate and they talk back. Um, they don't usually do the squawk, but they have like a <whistles> type thing. Sorry. Um, he looked at me. <laughs> um, very irritating things, but their uh, repetition of back and forth with words are very funny. So that's what I'm assuming that's what they're talking about, the mina birds. Liu Wenchang grew tired of listening to birdsong and got a mina from who knows where. The endless chatter as he undertook the meaningless task of teaching the bird to speak was very irritating. Okay, so yes, it was what I thought it was. Lin Qingyu took, Hu took Huan Tong out of the Blue Wind Pavilion and taking advantage of the good spring weather, found an open space in the garden and began laying out medicinal herbs to dry. Huan Tong spread out the medicinal herbs one by one and asked, Young master, the Blue Wind Pavilion's courtyard is so big, and there's also enough sun. Why don't we dry it there? Lin Qingyu said, Too noisy. Too many birds. Huan Tong grinned. I think it's fun. Young Master Hu has been teaching <laughs> Young Master Hu has been teaching that minor bird out <laughs> to call out Dr. Lin. Before when the young master refused to let him come to the Hu Mansion, he thought life there was difficult. After coming, he found that it was quite enjoyable. Young Master Hu had a distinguished status and had always been ill. Any good thing that comes to the mansion are sent to their courtyard first. The courtyard servants, too, get to bask in this glory. Young Master Hu himself was also crafty and interesting. Although he was not in good health, he could always find something fun for him, and he treated his family's young master and he treated his young master huh, and he treated his family's young master well. There was already a blessing amidst the misfortune. The two were drawing the herbs when Huan Tong saw a girl in pink in a pink short jacket and skirt coming toward them from a distance. He asked, Young master, who is that? Lin Qingyu looked up. Behind the girl was a momo and a maid. She must be a mistress of the household. In the Nananhu mansion, there was only one mistress around this age. The second young lady of the Hu mansion. Liu Wancheng's half-sister, Liu Nantao. Liu Nantao was born with bright eyes and pearly teeth. Sorry, my mind went to... Baby with teeth. <laughs> Sorry. Am I the only one that got that mental image? Nah. Liu Nan Tao was born with bright eyes and pearly teeth. I'm honestly imagining a cursed image of a baby grinning at me with a full mouth of teeth. Anyone else got that image? <laughs> She's shark baby. That's probably not at all what they meant. That's what I saw. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Where was I? Oh. Her every move and action reflected her wealth and noble upbringing. She slowly and unhurriedly approached Lin Qingyu. With a half bow, she said, 
Greetings, sister-in-law. <laughs> oh, good. I'm glad I'm not the only one. <laughs> he had no wish to bother with Liang Shi's daughter. But Liu Nan Tao was a girl, after all. He might as well show her a bit of face in front of the servants. Lin Qing Yu nodded and said calmly, Second Lady Liu. Liu Nan Tao smiled and said, Sister-in-law, you can just call me Nan Tao. I am embarrassed. I have been meaning to pay a visit to you, eldest brother and sister-in-law at the Blue Wind Pavilion. It's a pity that eldest brother is still sick and seems unwilling to be disturbed by others. Today, we finally get the chance to meet. As they say, sister-in-law truly is. Sister-in-law truly is peerlessly magnificent without equal in the world. Second young lady, Lu, need not call me sister-in-law. But you are my sister-in-law. Liu Nan Tao thought for a while. Or should I call you Lin Gaga? Lin Qing Yu found both titles revolting. Liu Qing Yu, Lin Qing Yu hesitated for a moment and decided to take the lesser of the two evils. Then you should call me sister-in-law after all. I have theories <laughs> as to why he would choose sister-in-law over Guga. Probably wrong, so I'll leave that to myself. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I was gonna... <laughs> My brain really wants me to spoil things, and don't you dare! Okay. Liu Nan Tao said softly, Yes. She saw the medicinal materials behind Lin Qing Yu and asked, Sister-in-law, are you drawing medicine? Hmm. Liu Nan Tao's heart moved. Could it be for elder brother? All these herbs were medicinal materials listed on his father's prescription. It was extremely difficult to prepare prescriptions, and even and every medicinal material had its own strict requirements. It would take at least more than a month from dispensing to fin yeah, from dispensing to finish the medicine. He spent so much time and energy on preparing this medicine, but he was merely just doing it for the sake of practice. Of course, if Lu Cheng wanted to try the medicine for him once it was finished, it wasn't impossible. Lin Cheng Yu did not respond, and Liu Nan Tao took his silence as affirmation. Dr. Jang has been in charge of eldest brother's health since he was a child. It is Dr. Jang who has the final say on what medicine he takes. Lin Cheng Yu's patience has already been exhausted. What do you want to say? Sister-in-law, do not get me wrong. This bitch has it coming. Liu Nan Tao seemed a little apprehensive. I know that sister-in-law cares about eldest brother and wants him to get better soon. It's just that elder brother's body is very precious. Not a wisp of sloppiness must be allowed. Even if sister-in-law was born into a renowned family of medical, es medical experts... If you wish for Elder Brother to take this medicine, it would be best to talk to Dr. Jang first. Huan Tong smiled unhappily. Second young lady, not only has my family's young master already obtained the master's teachings, but he has been made disciple by a miracle-working doctor. In terms of medical skill, the Dr. Jang... That Dr. Jang may not be as good as... Lin Qing Yu faintly felt that something was wrong and interrupted, Huan Tong. Huan Tong resentfully closed his mouth. Lin Qing Yu said, This medicine is not for Master Hu. The second young lady is overly anxious. Not for other brother? That's... It's getting late. Lin Qing Yu turned a deaf ear. Huan Tong. Pack up, we're heading back to the Blue Wind Pavilion. When Lin Qing Yu returned to the Blue Wind Pavilion, Liu Wen Chang's new favorite Maya had already learned how to greet people. 
Li Wencheng wound around Lin Jingyu, carrying it in his hand. Both man and bird kept calling out, Dr. Lin! Dr. Lin! That's how they sound. That was almost exact. <laughs> Lin Qingyu wanted to poison both of them. Lin Qingyu threatened, If you use your bird to bother me again, I will kill it and stew it into soup. How fierce, Dr. Lin! Li Wen Chang handed the birdcage to Hua Lu, motioning for her to carry it out. With how fierce you are, what girl would marry you once I'm gone? Lin Ching Yu said coldly, Young Master Hu need not worry about this. I will definitely marry a good person during the or <laughs> I will definitely marry a good person during the Qing Ming Festival. I will bring my wife to visit Young Master Hu's grave. Sorry, let me say it again. <laughs> Young Master Hu need not worry about this. I will definitely marry a good person and bring the during the Qing Ming festival. I will bring my wife to visit Young Master Hu's grave. Liu Wancheng smiled and said, Then you must remember to burn a lot of paper money. I'm afraid I won't have enough money down below. Of course. After their agreement to burn paper money at his grave, Lin Qing Yu moved on to discuss proper business and told Liu Wancheng about meeting Liu Nantao in the garden. Liu Nantao has repeatedly go Oh, does it? No, it doesn't. Sorry, I didn't mean to just leave it there, but I have no idea who started this. I'm just going to go with what I think. I don't know. Uh... Yeah. Lunan Tao has repeatedly come to see me, but you've avoided her every time using various reasons. Do you know something? Didn't I tell you? I know a lot more. On the table were Lin Qing Yu's freshly dried medicinal materials. Seeing something new, Liu Wen Chang began. Liu Wen Chang, being the type to touch things he one shouldn't, went to grab a handful. Lin Qing Yu slapped his hand away. Is this also something that the stars told you? Yes. Liu Wen Chang blew on the back of his reddening hand. The stars say that she's not a good person, so just ignore her. Lin Ching Yu said thoughtfully, I see. Yeah. So one day, Lin Ching Yu looked at the soundly sleeping person sharing his bed and sighed. As expected, my hair got trapped. I don't know if they actually, well, they, I would assume that they would have to end up sleeping together, right? Like that's kind of the point of it. I'm feeling okay. I'm going to go for a chapter 10. Oh. Chapter 9. Okay. That's Yoey drinking and the knee drinking. We're drinking at the same time. <clears throat> Do you hear that? My Yui is a nighttime eater. I don't know if you, any of you have dogs. Cats do it all the time, but dogs, I, I, we've only had now two. You and our old dog, Mags, she was a nighttime eater. Where she'd get up in the middle of the, or you'd wake up to the sound of her crunching in the middle of the night. Like just, she got up for a nighttime snack, but she wouldn't eat during the day. It's the weirdest thing. She's the same. She's a nighttime eater. While I take a few deep breaths. Wish I had a plate. What would you like to have? Because I've had almost every pet that you could possibly have <laughs> at some point or another. 
see we had the only thing i haven't had as a allowed pet dog definitely i had a snake once but i brought it in from the garden put it in a fishbowl and expected it to stay there <laughs> Needless to say, I was woken up the next morning by my mother screaming my name. The snake had somehow gotten out of my room and crawled into a broken part of her makeup mirror. So she's like, what's that? <laughs> the tail had just been poking out. She bends down to look. <laughs> Here's this itty bitty garden snake face looking back at her and does little <laughs> over the stuff. Stop it! <laughs> to this day, I have not lived that down. <laughs> Not the first shenanigans, but yeah, <laughs> to this day, my, my mother loves to tell that story. You're beautiful. You gonna lay down soon? We went to the cottage yesterday, and his breed of dog is not supposed to be a swimming dog, but he loves the water. But this weekend, he did his first water retrieve, you know, where you throw the stick in and they go to get it and they bring it back. Um, I think he didn't quite get what I was trying to do because he got it and then he brought it back and he just like dropped it and walked away. Like he was mad that I had thrown it and <laughs> made him get it. Um, but then he started diving under the water for sticks. Weirdo. So his face is still all... Because then, of course, they get out of the water and then they rub their face in the mud and the leaves and everything to try and dry off, I'm assuming. So his white face is still a little sooty black. No, I'm sure he'll lay down here in a minute. <clears throat> okay, I'm excited to keep going. I'm feeling okay. And where are we at? So, five minutes to two hours. So, we're hour and 55 minutes so far. Yeah, we can make this probably, what, hour and 50, or two hours and 15 minutes? Two hours and 10 minutes? I'm good. I can keep going. If, if anyone that's on here and lurking, if you need to go, I completely 100% get it. And, uh... You know, you don't have to worry about staying up. I know that tomorrow's a Monday, so most of us have shit to do tomorrow. Um, just to reiterate, if you're ever looking for my episodes and they fall off of Twitch, like I know that Twitch only keeps them for a little while, I do have the YouTube channel where as soon as these are done, they get uploaded to the YouTube channel and then they'll be there forever. So, and it's under the same, the library, and I will at some point, at some point, remember to put Bringing links on places. Okay. Key settle down. Let's get to chapter 9. Deep breaths. <clears throat> chapter 9. I seem to be able to understand Lu Wan Cheng. <gasps> Is this the part? Is this it? There's, I've, um, from my few favorite, from what I've read little bits, I did have a few favorite chapters. Let alone in the wealthy and influential families, even in poor, humble families, paying respects to her in-laws was something that a daughter-in-law had to do. Lin Qingyu was extremely adverse to doing it, but in order not to leave Lan Qing any Lang Shi anything to hold against him, he had no choice but to appear before Liang Shi every day and go through the motions. Good God. Could you, could you imagine that? Okay, so can you imagine every single morning you have to get up early, get all your shit, like regalia on, like be more than business appropriate, and then go and greet your mother-in-law? Could you imagine? That'd probably suck. Nothing against mother-in-laws. If they're good, they're, they're it's great. And, like you would enjoy that. But I can... That would suck. Well, I'm antisocial. <laughs> so being forced to greet anyone first thing in the morning, I'd be, fuck that. <laughs> yeah, no. 
I'll greet my dog first thing in the morning. That's about it. Even the cat. Cat and I, we greet across the room. Hi, how you doing? Wake up. That's good. That's that's all we need. I don't, don't talk to me in the morning. And I'm not sure as hell I'm not getting ready. Yeah, political intrigue. I couldn't do it. Not built for it. <clears throat> in the past, Liang Qi wouldn't say much to him, to him either. He never responded to topics between married women, and Liang Shi couldn't get a firm grasp over him. So she would simply ask him a bit about Luan Chang's condition, and then allow him to return to the Blue Wind Pavilion. Early this morning, Lin Qing Yu stopped into the main hall. He saw Liang Shi sitting in the main seat and knew she had something to say. Sure enough, Liang Shi had the maid serve two cups of freshly brewed tea then said while savoring the taste, Ching Yu, you've been married into the Hu Mansion for a while. Then Ching Yu did not reply. Liang Shi waited for a while and then continued, Do you know what is the most important thing about being a... I'm assuming bride or wife? I don't know why it's just a question mark. Then Ching Yu said calmly, I don't know. The top priority is, of course, to bear children. The top priority is, of course, to bear children for your husband. However, Liang Shi sighed, looking very much filled with regret. Lin Qing Yu inwardly sneered. This I cannot do. Madam should have young master Hu cast me off and have him marry a good wife who can. Liang Shi had probably grown accustomed to his sarcastic remarks and wasn't upset at being contradicted. Instead, she smiled and said, What silly thing are you saying? You are Wang Ch Wan Chang's lucky star. Wan Chang could have never, e could never, ever leave you. When Liang Shi finished speaking, she sized up Lin Qing Yu's expression. Seeing that he remained unmoved, she brought her face back to a serious expression. She said with a stern countenance, The most important thing is what is called assisting one's husband and teaching one's children. For now, the teaching part you cannot do. So you can only learn how to assist one's husband. You are the Xiaojin of the Hu Mansion. You should learn how to manage the affairs of the mansion, so that you can share Wan Chang's burdens. I don't know if this is a good voice for her. I keep losing it. I can't get a firm grasp. I had a firm grasp in my head when I was originally reading it of what she sounded like, but for some reason, when as soon as my throat starts to get tired, I can't do it, so I'm I'm just... I'm giving her like a tremor type voice and hoping it fits. That's all I've got. Just know this woman's a bitch. <laughs> That's all I got to trying to get across. Simpering bitch face. <clears throat> Share young master whose burdens. Then Ching Yu laughed. Dare I ask, madam, what exactly are young master whose burdens? Is it the Huawei being unable to sing? Or the Mina being unable to speak? Or is it his illness? Just as Lin Qing Yu guessed, upon hearing the word illness, Liang Shi's lips pursed unnaturally. Dr. Zhang is there to take care of Wang Cheng's condition. If I remember correctly, Master Hu once asked me to take care of young Master Hu's body. At that time, Madam was also there. In indeed, there was such a thing. Then Ching Yu nodded lightly. Then it shall be as Madame said. Liang Shi's fingers curled into fists, but a smile appeared on her face. Long before you married, 
I heard the matchmaker say that the son of the Panyan of the Imperial Hospital was born not only with muchless good looks, but also with outstanding talent and intelligence. With the ability to remember things with a single look. Sorry, uh, just hold with me one second. I want to see if I can get her voice back. It'll, it'll be different, but let me just see if I could figure this out. No, it's not coming to me. I don't have a proper image of her in my mind anymore. But also with outstanding talent and intelligence, with the ability to remember things with a single look. It is the most capable people who do the most work. Given your intelligence, attending to both the matters of the mansion and to Wan, Wan Ching's health should not be a difficult feat for you. Come. An old woman walked in. It was Liu Momo who had been punished a month ago to do drudgery. Liu Momo presented several thick ledgers and said, Asking Xiao Zhen to take a look at these. Lin Qing Yu casually picked up the top one and said indifferently, I have not seen you in a month. Liu Momo evidently appears to have aged. It seems that you have not had an easy time of doing drudgery. Liu Momo forced a smile and said, This servant committed a mistake. It is only right that she was punished. Hello, Ghost Wanderer. How are you? Welcome to the stream. We are reading Married Thrice to Salted Fish. And right now, these two bitches are trying to ambush our Liu Lin Qing Yu, and it's not going to fucking work. So welcome. Hope you enjoy. It is uh, Dan Mei, so BL, the Chinese web novel. What? <laughs> what, you don't like my summary? <laughs> That's my summary. I thought it worked. I thought it was a good one. <laughs> Dealing with a bit of anxiety, so here to listen to some narration. Awesome. We are so happy to have you. <laughs> Thanks, Sam. <laughs> okay, so we're going to continue. Where do I'm going to keep giggling. So I'm going to go back and clip that. <laughs> what was the title again? I've also read Chinese Dame before, so we're good. The title is Married Thrice to Salted Fish, and it's written by uh, Bika B. And you can find it on multitude of places, uh, but the links are in my descriptions from past ones, from past episodes. Um, and if you uh, can't find episodes on here, uh, it's also on YouTube. Uh, so yeah, so it's about a thrice married. It's about a guy who transmigrates into a novel, same novel, three times, three separate people, um, but always married to the same person. And it's Lin, Lin Qing Yu that he's married to. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's funny. <laughs> All right. So let me, well, it's not laugh out loud funny, although I think kind of, I don't know. Don't listen to me. <laughs> it is funny. Uh, where am I here? Uh, do drudgery. Basically telling this bitch she looks old. Uh, be a momo, force a smile. Do, 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 do. It's a romance, but it's good. <laughs> it's a romance where both the main characters are insisting that they're not gay. So that's also funny. Um... I was like, wow, he's so beautiful, the greatest beauty in all the world. But no, I don't want to sleep with him. Do you want to sleep with me? I really want to. <laughs> it's one of those. Uh, okay, let's see here. Uh, okay. These are the ledgers for, this, for just this month. Try to organize them first. How far into it are you? Sorry, I don't have them. No worries, no worries. Uh, we're only on chapter, what, nine? 
exactly. Okay, so the whole premise, and I get really excited about this, so just let me explain this fuckery. So uh, the main character, Lin Ching Yu, he's the one who has um, transmigrated into this novel. And he is sickly and so his family it's a chinese tradition almost like you would have heard in probably the japanese myth of the ghost marriages right so in order to bring two wandering spirits together they married them after they're dead so this is one where it's kind of similar only in that you know in order to help prolong someone's life the hope is is that the good blessings and good wishes of being married or getting married uh staves off those evil spirits that are trying to pull you under um it has a specific name and it's in here i just can't remember the name of it it will show up again um so the empress heard from this we'll call him an oracle it's not it's called the national teacher the smartest person in the country i guess and the national teacher says find a person with this birth date and have them get married <laughs> That's, that's almost exactly what our main main character uh, is dealing with. So not not lynching you. Lynching you is very firmly like, no bitch. <laughs> like, no, we're not going there. I'm not sleeping with you. But Lu Wan Cheng is kind of like, but he's so pretty. Are you sure you don't want to share a bed? I mean, I'm not gay, but I'd really like to sleep with you. <laughs> so, um... I completely lost where I was. So these two people were forced to get married. And Lu Wan Chang... <laughs> no, uh, and Lu Wan Chang was actually in a coma at the time. And so how the hell did uh, Lin Cheng Yu and Lu Wan Chang actually get married while one of them was in a coma? You will find out. And it's very funny. Um, I will also preface this. I keep saying this, but I have only actually read this myself up to about chapter 20. And then after that, it's all, we're all in a blind. Um, but I have been assured that it's really good all the way through. Okay. <laughs> I get so excited. <laughs> all I can say is animal cruelty. There will be a warning. Um, <clears throat> I shouldn't have said that. Damn it. Fucking spoilers. <laughs> I have to go to bed in three minutes. Why exactly three minutes? Oh, it's 10 o'clock. I get you. I get you. <laughs> like, I'm like, that's very specific. Um, yeah, so don't worry, uh, Sam, if you miss the rest of this. Again, it'll still be on Twitch for you to listen to whenever. And it'll also be on um, um, YouTube. That's the one. It's not like it's not a super famous site and I should remember what the hell it was called. No, it's also on YouTube. And again, I'll be posting. Sam, you remember, um, you know the podcast if you look up the podcast on youtube Sears audio fan fictions and then you go into channels <laughs> there's a link to it there <laughs> all, what was that it's all very convoluted but that's where it is okay i'm gonna keep going uh after luma mo foster smile the servant committed a mistake it's only right that you be, pun be punished yeah this bitch needs to be punished Oh, the recommendation? The fanfic wreck? Yes. So fucking good. It's so good. You seem fun, so I've dropped off. Thank you so much. I loves it. Thank you so much, Ghost Wander. I really do. I'm I hope you do enjoy. This is, I'm on here every Wednesday evening and Sunday evening. Mostly a Sunday thing. Well, that's how it started on a Sunday thing. Cause so that you had something absolutely. I'm gonna check out your YouTube view. Thank you so much. Because I don't think I have any followers. I don't know if... Look at the little watermelon. <laughs> it's so cute. Um, I don't know if a page will actually show up if there aren't any followers. Thank you. That's all. Wait, I got... I got yay. <laughs> Thank you so much. That reminds me, I actually have to record still the chapters for this week coming up. I hope you didn't... I hope you took my warnings to heart for the Buffy episode that was just aired. That was... Oh, you talk about... Oh, that got some risque. That was, that was a little more than I was usual, but... Anyways, 
can continue on. Sam, if you have to go to bed, because if you have shit to do tomorrow, you do that. <laughs> I'll be here. Okay. Good night. Have a good day tomorrow. These are the ledgers of this last month. Try to organize them first. If there's anything you don't understand, you can ask mother. Oh shit, that was the wrong voice. Wrong. <laughs> good night. <clears throat> These are the ledgers for the last month. Try to organize them first. If there's anything you don't understand, you can ask mother at any time. Liang Shi said. There's quite a lot of them, but given your ability, how about three days? Within three days, tidy up the ledgers and return it to mother, yes? Before Lin Qing Yu could speak, Liu Momo rushed in to say, Xiao Jun, the madam regards you very highly. Exactly, Ling Liang Shi said with a smile. I am old, and I wish to enjoy a life of ease and comfort. In the future, this huge whole mansion will depend on Chang'e's management. We actually have a lurker. <laughs> Ghost Wanderer. We do, we have with, I, I want to say with Lovey, um, is I, I, I think they're still lurking. I've got a higher viewer count, <laughs> so I'm assuming. But yes, it'll just be you and me. We just chillin'. I hope everything's okay. You were saying that you weren't feeling so hot. But if we can take your mind off of it and trying to... Then that's what we do. Because that's what this shit is here is for. Because me too. <laughs> okay. Q Mansion... Will depend on Ching Yu's management. Where are we here? Although the fact that mistress and servant, although the act that mistress and servant put on was clumsy. Ah, uh, yes. That should do it to you. If I'm. Are you pulling an all nighter? Read Andrew's best because that's interesting. I do. I do. Big fan. <laughs> <laughs> yes we're actually the next this next week's episode will be part three of that ongoing um mdz series uh i can't <clears throat> i haven't started yet so i can't remember the name but it's the one by um with glitter bombshell the third in her series where wei wu jian is teaching the baby lands I'm very excited to get back to it. Very excited to get back to it. It's one of my favorite series because it's so cute. It's just happy. Uh, da, da, da. Although the act that mistress and service put on was clumsy, it was reasonable. The mistress had entrusted the stewardship of the household to the Saojun. Shaojun. No matter how anyone looked at it, the mistress was being magnanimous and putting her trust in the Shaojun. If the Xiaojun were, if he would be branded as being, of being an unworthy wife. The question was, was Lang Shi seriously letting him manage the household? <clears throat> How could that possibly be? Unlike Lu Chang's biological mother, Liang Shi was born ordinary. Her father was only an assistant manager below fourth rank. She must still cower in fear in front of the Nanan Ho. There was the eldest son left by the first wife, and her own biological son was trash. The only thing Liang Shi could carry with her in the Hu Mansion was the power of stewardship. He didn't have the best, the least bit interest in the Hu Mansion's power of stewardship. He was, however. Interested in seeing Liang Shi regret her actions. Seeing her ashamed and reproaching herself. I will carry in my heart the madam's kindness. Lin Qing Yu threw the account books on, in his hand back onto the tray. 
I accept these ledgers. <laughs> Liang Chi nodded, gratified. Ching Yu, don't let mother down. This bitch. As soon as Lin Ching Yu left, the gentleness left Liang Chi's face. She, she murmured. He actually agreed so readily. Liu Momo looked aghast, askance in the direction of the door. Don't look at how Xiao Zhen appears like an immortal aloof from politics and material pursuits. In his heart, he still thinks the he still thinks of the wealth of the Hu Mansion. It's always the moms. I fucking agree. <laughs> But in this case, it's it's the the equivalent of the butler. So it's the head lady, lady's maid or whatever. Don't you worry. Don't you worry, though. <laughs> our Xiaozhen, our Liang Xi, or yeah, Lin Chiang, he's got this. <clears throat> Liang Xi shook her head. He only has the immor... He only has the Imperial Medical Office in his heart. Naturally, he shouldn't be this kind of person. Why would he not be? Madam, one may know a person for a long time without understanding his true nature. You must keep your guard up. You must not let Xiao Zhen actually seize the power of stewardship. About... About this, you can rest assured... Liang Shi said easily. I sent someone to inquire about it. He never asked about the account books in the Lin residence. No matter how outstanding in ability and wisdom, it is impossible to attend to both things at once. We'll have to see which one he wants to give up. As for the stewardship, in the end, it can only be mine. Liu Momo said solicitous, solicitously, Madam is wise. Liang Shi slowly got up with Liu Momo's support. Notify the servants who understand the accounts. Don't let them help people they shouldn't. Madam Liu hurriedly said, This servant will go at once. In the Blue Wind Pavilion, Liu Wan Chang slept until midday as usual. Seeing that his complexion didn't look so good upon waking up, Hua Lu asked him if he was uncomfortable anywhere. Liu Wan Chang rubbed his forehead and said, I have a headache. Hua Lu said nervously, You're in perfectly good condition. How can you have a headache? Liu Wan Chang guessed, Probably from lack of sleep. Hualu. Crickets, crickets, crickets. <laughs> I have a sound effect. That is crickets. And I don't know if anyone actually hears it, but I keep fucking pressing it in hopes that someday someone will hear the crickets, crickets, crickets. It happens a lot in this. <clears throat> And it's always Lu Wan Chang leaving people in that kind of, are you fucking serious? Although it was a common occurrence for Lu Wan Chang to have headaches and slight fevers, Hua Lu didn't dare be the slightest bit neglectful. And so she went to study and invite, she went to the study and invited Lin Qing Yu over. Lin Qing Yu checked his pulse, felt his forehead, and said, you're sleeping too much. Liu Wan Cheng was shocked. Impossible. Why would it be impossible? Lin Qing Yu said. Do you think you're a baby? You sleep for 16 hours a day. If anyone's going to get a headache, it's you. Liu Wan Cheng sighed. What should I do then? Lin Qing Yu sat on the side of, this the, side of the bed, massaging Liu Wan Cheng's temples for him. The force of his hands neither light nor heavy. Sleep less. In the future, even if you want to wake up, you might not. His voice stopped abruptly. Liu Wan Chang was resting on Lin Qing Yu's lap. 
smelling the faint scent of books on him. Suddenly, there was a hint of uneasiness. He stiffened for a moment, telling himself that lynching you was also a man. He... Telling himself that lynching you was also a man, he then relaxed, closing his eyes to enjoy this moment of peace. He hadn't enjoyed for long before lynching you ruthlessly stopped and got up, leaving Hua Lu to take his place. Hua... Du Wan Cheng said quietly, It's over? I'm very busy. Huh? What are you doing? Light as a feather, Lin Ching Yu let out his sentence. You have a good stepmother. After Lu Wan Cheng inquired a little bit, he found out what had happened that morning. He couldn't help chuckling, and he said, She's in a bit of a hurry, isn't she? Can't even wait for a few months. Not bad. Hua Lu, Hua Lu couldn't understand. She said, If Xiao Zhen becomes the one managing the household in the future, wouldn't our life be better? Liu Wan Chang smiled and said, What are you thinking? In the afternoon, Lin Qing Yu ran out of the study, taking the medicine roller with him. The Blue Wind Pavilion had an elegant gazebo, most suitable for enjoying the spring scenery. It was a pity that Lin Ching Yu came, to, came a step too late, and the pavilion had already been occupied. Liu Wan Cheng was half lying on a rocking chair. Rocking slowly, he basked in the sun. Dressed as he was in red, with a languid look on his face, and his long hair carelessly tied together, it added to his romantic and unrestrained air. Hearing Lin Ching Yu's footsteps, Lu An Chang opened his eyes and looked. Why is Dr. Lin here? And I thought you'd be staying in your study the whole day. Lin Ching Yu said, I'm here to pound medicine. Lu An Chang asked, Eh? Aren't you looking at the accounts? Then Ching Yu said, I'll deal with it later. Then why not only Then why not only do you want to read meta <clears throat> Sorry? Then why not only do you want to read medical books and dispense medicine, but you also want to look at the accounts? You want everything? Liu Wen Chang looked asked in surprise. What do you mean? Can you even finish it? I'll try. Oh, Dr. Lin. What kind of medicine are you pounding? A good medicine. <laughs> A good medicine for in men. Liu Wan Cheng. Crickets, crickets, crickets. <laughs> in a gazebo by the water, with luxuriant flowers and trees all around, the two of them, one basking in the sun, the other pounding medicine, shared this boundless spring scenery. It was already getting late by the time Lin Ching Yu finished the today's matter of today's matter of dispensing medicine. He lit the lamp in the study and began to look through the ledgers. Though it was true that he has never come into contact with the household's general affairs, he was constantly by his mother's side when he was young. His mother often managed the accounts, and imperceptibly influenced by what he had seen and heard, he too managed to get the general idea. See? Huh? Don't discount this bitch. He knows more than you. Bookkeeping is done in a streamlined way, so it is not difficult to understand. But the writing in the account books Liang Shi gave him were small and blurred. No worries. That's okay, you take your time, you do what you need to do. <coughs> we'll still be here. <laughs> but the writing in the account books Liang Shi gave him were small and blurred. After only half an hour of looking at it and his eyes were already sore. In addition... 
The transaction dates were confusing. Details were missing, and the contents missing from one book appeared in another. No wonder Liang Shi wanted him to finish it in three days. But even so, it might not be impossible for him to do it. In the dead of night, the candlelight flickered. Hearing the soft sounds behind the door, Quan Tong, who had been waiting upon Lin Qing Yu by the desk, ran to open the door. Young Master Hu, why aren't you asleep yet? Liu Wencheng stepped in the, into the study with Hua Lu's help. The night is long, but I'm in no mood to sleep. Besides, your young master won't let me sleep anymore. With his head down, looking at the ledger, Lin Qing Yu said, I told you to sleep less during the day. I didn't tell you to stay up late. From morning to night, Lin Qing Yu didn't stop for even a moment. By this time, he could no longer hide his exhaustion. Seeing Lin Qing Yu's tired face, Liu Wencheng's chest tightened. Oh, by the way, Ghost Wanderer, you missed a really good... Oh, he's so beautiful. Oh, I love him so much. Oh, please keep giving me head rubs. And I'm not gay, though. <laughs> oh, it's such a romantic scene. No homo. Like... <laughs> These two are utterly ridiculous. <clears throat> the denial is rife. <laughs> Liu Chang's chest tightened. He said, It's already... How about you don't look at those for now? Leave today's matters for tomorrow's you. How about it? Lin Qing Yu didn't look up. Tomorrow's me would rather give it to today's young Master Hu. Eh? Since young Master Hu has a long night ahead of him and doesn't want and doesn't wish to sleep, why not come and help me? Liu Wan Cheng choked. He put his hands to his temples and started walking backwards. My head's starting to hurt again. Let me lie down. I, I should lie down. Liu Wan Cheng slipped away so fast that it made Huan Tong wonder if his illness had already healed. <laughs> it's true. This is true. <clears throat> the two of them are in such complete denial. But it's a very cute denial. It's not like a, um, like a, a hasty, angry, uh, I don't like him because he's a man type thing. It's more of a, you're my husband, but I didn't want you to be, so I don't actually like you. <laughs> it's, it's more like one of those, but they do, and it's really cute. <laughs> oh, I should mention, you were asking what this is about. Uh, Liu Wan Cheng, the main character here, he's terminally ill. So that's where the transmigration three times comes in, married thrice. Uh, so Li Lin Qing Yu is married to Liu Wan Cheng, but Liu Wan Cheng is terminally ill. So that's whenever they're talking about the illness and how weak he is. It's not annoying, but more comp That's exactly it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's honestly, because how many times are you reading a story? You're like, oh my fuck, you actually love each other. Just open your eyes. But it's not that. It's just a comedic way. That they're both, they, they fit so perfectly together that you don't even mind. <laughs> that they're constantly no homo though. <laughs> oh, and the salted fish bit. I'm not sure if you are used if you know that term from Don May, but it's him being absolutely lazy. Like, I don't want to do fuck all. Like, if, if I've tried transmigrate, I just want to lay in a bed and sleep. One of those. He's basically a neat. <clears throat> Liu Wencheng slipped away so fast that it made Huan Tong wonder if his illness had already healed. Huan Tong served Lin Qing Yu a fresh cup of tea and whispered, That young master who? Really? He's so adverse to even the littlest bit of work. Lin Qing Yu was used to it. Same. He's just a bag of lazy bones. 
You'd be better off burning incense and praying to Buddha than to count on him. <laughs> I know. Out of the two of them, I, I'm really wondering how many comments I'm going to get of, they are my spirit animal. <laughs> because there will come a point where, for Lin Ching Yu, because he's so badass in this, and he's honestly probably my favorite character, one of my favorite characters in this, and you go, oh my god, he's my spirit animal. But yeah, Liu Wen Cheng, so relatable. It's like, I've been transmigrated into this book. Fuck it, just let me sleep. <laughs> Someone pass me a different book. I can just lay here and read this. Let the world go on around without me. <clears throat> He's just a bag of lazy bones. You'd be better off burning incense and praying to Buddha than to count on him. When he said these words, he found that Luan Chang had unexpectedly turned back and returned. Allowing no explanation, he walked in front of Liu Lin Ching Yu. Expression imposing, he looked at the books spread out on the table. Lin Ching Yu was baffled. What? Lin Liu Wen Cheng leaned forward and blew out the table lamp. Lin Ching Yu. Crickets, 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 crickets. Oh, like at the same time, he's trying to look. No. Yeah, that's exactly it. And that's, that's honestly, that's the, exactly the um, attitude that he's taken. Where he's like, I'm just going to lay back and kind of wait to die. But uh, at the same time, he's trying to help Lin Ching Yu. Because Lin Ching Yu was married by force. Like, he didn't want any part of this. And he was forced to. His family was essentially threatened, so he had to marry into this family. And so uh, Liu Wen Cheng is like, you know what? I'm going to die soon. I'm going to leave all of my inheritance to you. I'm the first son. All of it's going to go to you. You just have to put in a little bit of work and let me know that you want it. And I will take care of you in my death. Right? Because I, he's like, I hate this family. This family is awful, but I'll take care of you. So it's, oh, it's so good. <laughs> I always wanted to describe this, this story as... Um, bad people in good love, but they're not bad people. They're just, they're not the, these pillars of righteousness. Like they're not going to make, they, they're going to do the things that you wish, like the back of your mind, you're like, you know what? Someone needs to poison this bitch. Like shut them up. Yeah. And then they're like, and they do it. And you're like, oh my God, <laughs> it's like, you know, but yeah, it's, I keep saying how much I like it, and then I forget to read. <laughs> In the darkness, he felt a cool touch around his wrist. Liu Wen Chang had unexpectedly gotten hold of his wrist. Go to sleep. The account books? Leave them to me. Lin Ching Yu broke free of his grip. Leave them to you. You're not just going to leave them undone, are you? Liu Wen Cheng was momentarily at a loss for words. He was unable to refute. Besides, if Liang Shi finds out what, that you'd done it, wouldn't she accuse me of being disrespectful to my husband? I want to do this well because I know. I know you want to take this opportunity to slap her in the face, but there's no need to make like, life difficult for yourself. You don't like managing the affairs of the household, so why force yourself? Li Wan Chang said. Wan Tong, hide the lamp. Don't let your young master light it. Lin Ching Yu said coldly, Young master who? Mind your own business. Don't invite yourself in mine. Wan Tong, turn on the lamp. Wan Tong. Yeah, Liang Shi is essentially the stepmom. So we found out that she's not his biological mother. So he, his mother died in childbirth and he was premature. So that's why he's sickly. And then his dad got remarried. And then so it's Liang Shi is the stepmom. And she has a son and a daughter. All trash. <laughs> I, I don't mean to spoil, but all trash. Okay. Quan Tong didn't dare disobey the young master's words, and he turned on the lamp again. <laughs> I know, right?
right? It's a little cliche. It's a little cliche. Um, but don't worry too much about her. All of this is one of those real feel-goods where the people who deserve revenge get revenge. You know what I mean? And the people who deserve to be put down get put down. It's it's really good that way. Exactly. And none of it's going to go... So she's... It, it shows up. But yeah, she's definitely working behind the scenes, but she's not smart enough to work super behind the scenes. She's only gotten away with it so long because, like, the her husband, the head of the household, is busy or just leaves it in her care. So it's one of those where he's just negligent. But yeah, it'll all come to light. It'll all come to light. It's so good. <laughs> I know, right? It really does seem that most of them kind of lean into it. So it checks out. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. I It's very few stepmoms where they don't really... They all, they lean into the stereotype. I've known... Yeah. Yeah. Crazy bitches most of the time. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what's up with that. Crazy bitches. <clears throat> Lynching... Lin Ching Yu then saw Liu Wen Chang's expression was no longer his usual lazy and casual one. Liu Wen Chang raised his eyebrows and said, Your business? Liu Wen Chang felt this like Liu Wen Chang felt like this felt a little unfair to Lin Ching Yu. Liu Wen Chang said again, Since when were the troubles created by my stepmother your business? Shouldn't it be mine? There's no need to trouble yourself. Lin Ching Yu's voice was a bit cold. Young Master Hu should just rest and recuperate. Liu Wan Chang was silent for a moment. He then suddenly smiled, returning to normal again. But without Dr. Lin in the room, I can't sleep at night. Then you might as well stay up. Lin Ching Yu didn't feel sorry for him at all. The occasional burning of the midnight oil never killed anyone. Li Wen Chang. <laughs> I really wish my crickets worked. There's crickets. <laughs> crickets, crickets, crickets. <clears throat> Neither of them slept well that night. Lin Ching Yu went to bed in the wee hours of the morning and still got up early to continue burying himself in the books. Young master... Quan Tong's voice came from outside. There's an uncle who wants to see you. He said he was summoned here by young master Hu. Was what was Lu Wan Chang up to? Lin Ching Yu frowned. Let him in. Not long after, a regular looking middle aged man walked in and said, Praying respects to Xiao Jin. I'm an accountant from. <clears throat> I am an accountant from Samanshan. My na surname is Jang. My name is Jang Shi Chong. Shi Chong. Chan. Shi Chan. My name is Jang Shi Chong. Lin Ching Yu was a bit surprised, but he was more or less understood what was going on. Young Master Hu asked you to come to. Last night. Young Master Hu wrote to young ma to Master Gugong. The letter said that Xiao Zhen had some messy accounts he needed to take care of, and that he was unable to do to do as much as he <coughs> Sorry, just a sec, I gotta take a drink. Oh. I'm going, why can't I feel my tongue anymore? That's a weird feeling. <coughs> The 
letter said that Xiaojin had some messy accounts he needed to take care of, and that he was unable to do as much as he would like to. After choosing carefully, Master Gugong sent me to come help. Jiang Shishan said respectfully, Do not worry, Xiaojin. I have been doing work in accounting since I was a child. No matter how bad the accounts are, I can settle them in one go. Yes, I do. This this white ball of fluff here, this is my Yui. So whenever he's on screen, it means that he's in the room with me. And I've got three versions of him. Let me see here. I've got happy Yui and excited Yui. Yeah, these are my Yui's. We can call him Yui here because I found that sometimes while reading, it's really distracting. <coughs> into your soul <laughs> but it's loving it is this is this is my baby yui and he is a very good boy and uh he's he's my baby angel prince yeah i'll leave him unhappy here so he's a japanese spitz so he really is in relation to my my avatar a little bit like that size he's just he's small but a little bit bigger than a pomeranian but smaller than a samoyed but yeah, he's my baby. So he's here on all the streams. He's even... <laughs> Watch this. Oh, you, yeah. Watch this is... Oh, it's the wrong one. Ah, where's my buttons? This one. <laughs> he's my Yui. <laughs> so he's like my unofficial mascot. <laughs> or my official mascot. Yes. Yes, he would be my official mascot. He, You'll hear him... Oftentimes, because he's in the room, I have food and water and his bones and his, all of his blankets here right beside me when I record. So you'll oftentimes hear him drinking or crunching or like scruffing up his bedding in the background. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's my baby. But yeah. Tell me if the tail... I'll, I'm going to put him back to calm because the tail wagging always out of the corner of my eye. That's all I see. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's see here. Where was I? Uh, oh yeah, Lu and Chang had just gotten an accountant to come save his husband. Um... Lin Qing Yu came back to his senses and handed the ledger to Jiang Cheng, to Jiang Shijong. Master Jiang, please take a look. Jiang Shijong turned a few pages and then said, This ledger was obviously deliberately made confusing. If Xiao Jun would entrust this matter to me, please allow me to take a day to fix this. Your complexion does not look too good. You should go back and rest. There is specialization in every industry. If he could achieve the goal, Liu Qin, Li, yeah, Liu Qin Yu didn't want to waste time on it. Lin Qing Yu walked in. Oh, that's why I was screwing up. I was missing the end. Lin Qing Yu didn't want to waste time on it. Lin Qing Yu walked out of the study. He stopped a maidservant and asked, where is young master Hu? The young maid said, Young master Hu has finished his meal. He's already gone to the garden. Lin Qing Yu arrived at the garden. Liu Wan Chang was playing in the pitch was playing the pitch pot game with a few of the maids and pages. Huan Tong lost half of his monthly allowance and was wailing in distress. Liu Wan Chang was sitting to the side, the corners of his lips flying up into a smile. He bore a remarkable resemblance to an ignorant and incomplete disciple. Lin Qing Yu looked at him for a moment, and suddenly felt as if he could understand Liu Wan Chang. Young Master Hu, gradually rising up for the sake of his wife. <coughs> That's because he he's, he doesn't want to do anything, but oh no, the, the husband's in trouble. I must act. So I'm trying to decide. It's 10.30 now. 
Do I go for another chapter and keep my chapters in even numbers? That'll put the stream up to a little over three hours. What are your thoughts? I don't know. I kind of do. Like, I'm feeling like I can keep going. And I don't really want to leave it on odd number. Seven to start at nine is okay. What are you feeling, Ghost Wanderer? Do you think one more chapter or leave it here for tonight? <laughs> yes. Your vote, what do you think? Okay. We'll keep going. Ah, I lost it, okay. <clears throat> I'm okay, like I do have to I do have to get up for work, but I'm not excited to do so. And I slept in, so yeah, I'm good to go. I, we can do one more. One more spare. Just out of curiosity, what time zone are you in? Are you Eastern? What is it? Eastern? Pacific? Atlantic? Sounds like a song. I don't know. <laughs> Alrighty. Okay. Chapter 10. This sounds like something that you knew would say. You are hopeless. Naturally, the person personally selected by Wen Gugong for his grandson would be very capable. Zhang Shishong was so experienced and so careful that it really took him only a day to sort out all the books. I have already... I have already sorted out all these ledgers. Zhang Shishong. Zhang Shishong had. Ah. Shi Chun. Okay, so yeah, okay, so we're about the same time. Zone. Okay, that's good. I just wanted to make sure. Uh, Zhang Shishong had a well thought out plan. If young Master Hu and Xiao Jun feel uneasy, you may look through it again. However, not to boast, but I have been balancing books for more than 30 years, and I have not made even half an error. Lin Ching Yu nodded. You have worked hard. Young Master Zhang is amazing. Li Wan Cheng raised his eyes and motioned to Hua Lu who immediately stepped forward to give Zhang Shishan the reward he had prepared in, in advance. A heavy bag of silver. I expect there to be follow-up on this matter. Please stay in Nananhu Mansion for the time being. Zhang Shishan bowed and said, As young master who orders. As soon as Zhang Shishan left, Liu Wancheng raised his eyes and motioned to Hua Lu, who immediately stepped forward to give Zhang Shishan the rope. Ah. Da, 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 da. What did that have? I completely missed that. <coughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There. As soon as Zhang Shishan left, Liu Wancheng's straight back immediately dropped. He lay on the table looking at Lin Qingyu. He made as if to speak, but stopped. Lin Qingyu flopped thr flipped through the finished ledger and said lightly, If you have something to say, just say it. I said to leave it to me, but you still didn't believe me. His tone sounded a bit accusatory. It was, it was a pity that this sort of move was useless on Lin Qingyu. And indeed, it wasn't you who dealt with it. You asked someone else to deal with it. What's the difference? You can't always rely on others for everything. Why not? I gave him money. It's a win-win situation. 
Then, when you're too lazy to eat, to sleep, or to marry a wife and make children, will you also have someone deal with it for you? Make children, you say? Li Wan Chang pretended to fall deep in thought. Hmm. It'd be great if I didn't have to move myself. <laughs> It'd be great if I didn't have to move myself. Lin Jingyu didn't understand what Lu Wencheng was talking about. When he understood, he got up suddenly, his face burning. I didn't mean that. Lu Wencheng smiled and raised his eyes. Then what did you mean? He merely wanted to say that there were things that one needed to do by oneself. Only a lecher would associate with that. Would associate that with some other thing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what he's talking about there is is. <laughs> So now I just have this image of him just laying there like a starfish. <laughs> I'm just laying there like a starfish. Go. <laughs> Sorry. I love him. <laughs> I get him. It would be great if I didn't make children. It would be great if I didn't have to move. Sorry, I don't know if I'm too tired, but I don't know why that struck me as so funny. <laughs> Only a ledger would associate that with some other thing. <laughs> you see what I mean by it's funny? <laughs> it's funny. Lin Jingyu looked down with drooping lids at the ledger leaning against the table. I'll let me tell you what right? <laughs> this is, I shouldn't say this, but I just have this image in my head of him laying there like a starfish. Hop on. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. I need to move on. <laughs> That's enough. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> No worries, no worries. <laughs> Only a lecher was supposed to be the same thing, okay. Lin Jing Yu looked down with drooping lids at the lecher leaning against the table and said, You're hopeless. In the blink of an eye, it was the day when Lang Shi. Mm, sorry, let me take a drink of water. I actually had tears, that was too funny. In the blink of an eye, it was the day when Liang Shi was to check the ledgers. Liang Shi got up early. As before, she sat in front of the mirror to dress and to dress and make up. Behind her, Liu Momo was putting her hair in a bun. Liang Shi suddenly felt the pain of hair being pulled from her scalp, and she cried out in surprise. What is the matter with you? After a month of hard work in the garden, and you can't comb hair anymore? Madam, forgive me. Forgive me, madam. Liu Momo bowed and scraped. She lowered her head and wiped her tears. From out of the corner of her eye, she looked at Liang Shi, trying to gauge her expression. <clears throat> oh, yes, lynching you would just... <laughs> He'd cut it off. <laughs> I'm sure you would. <laughs> Oh, trust me, more jokes like that are coming up. Uh, where are we? <clears throat> to tell the madam, to tell madam the truth, this servant is nearing sixty and has made to ensure and was made to endure such hardship. These hands have held a broom for an entire month, and now is tasked with holding madam's jade comb. This servant is afraid of dirtying the madam's things. Liang Shi smothered smoothed out the hair near her temples and said, voice deep, 
You are my trusted aid. Huh. You are my trusted aid. Punishing you was depriving me of face. You have been wronged. Today, the corners of Liang Shi's lips ticked up. Let's see. Liu Nantao was... Liu Nantao came early to pay her respects to Liang Shi. Even after doing so, she didn't leave, staying to accompany Liang Shi. However, they waited until the tea had gone cold, but they saw neither hide nor hair of Lin Qingyu. Liu Momo craned her neck and looked out. Could it be that Xiao Zhen is lacking in self-confidence, and so didn't even come to pay his respects? This is too unsightly. A male wife from a hum humble family simply doesn't understand the rules. Liu Momo, watch your words, Liu Nantao, Liu Nantao said without urgency. We shall wait. If we can no longer wait, then we shall simply send someone to inquire. Before she could even finish her words, from outside came the announcement of his arrival. Young Master Xiao Zhen, uh, young Master and Xiao Zhen are here. Liu Nan Tao was surprised. Eldest brother is also here? Liu Momo curled her lips in contempt. He must have come to make a request on Xiao Zhen's behalf. For some reason, Liang Shi felt somewhat apprehensive. If this was before, Liu Wancheng was nothing but a sick seedling. She coaxed him, flattered him, and then used the Cheng Shi to find him a male wife. That's the thing I was talking about, the Cheng Shi. So, to that he had to marry even though he was in a coma and like that was going to make him live longer. That's the, that's what the thing. That's the thing. Oh, I knew it was mentioned again. Once he could no longer hold on, she would finally wait patiently for him to die. But, since Lin, Lin Qingyu married into the family, this sick seedling's body grew better day after day. I know. Apparently prepare for tears. It's a happy ending, but the story is going to make us cry, I just realized <laughs> I know. It, honestly, I haven't gotten to that part, but that's what everyone said. That it's, yeah, we are, we are to prepare for some pain. But it's not like Urha. Like, it's not that kind of pain. It's not the misunderstanding kind. It's not the, the you know, um, hurting each other kind. It's purely like, wait for me. That kind. Yeah. I'm assuming I haven't read it either. Everyone said that it's pretty painful. <laughs> I love that. Dude, this story's going to make us cry. I just realized. Yeah. I feel like that should be the quote of how do we, how to describe this. We're going to cry at some point. Ow. That sounded a lot worse than it was. Uh, <clears throat> For some reason, Liang Shi felt somewhat apprehensive. Oh, we already did that. Um, he's getting better day by day. He could even get out of bed now, and his temperament also changed a lot. The medicine Lin Qing Yu was formulating must have something to do with it. Thinking of how Liu Wancheng had going round the curves and skirting the corners, giving her a warning last time, even bringing up his birth mother, Liang Shi felt so dejected that she hadn't slept well for several days. I have, honestly, I have not gotten through Urha either. It's just some of the parts where I'm like, like even just the beginning parts, like you know this is going to be painful. And, and, um, oh, God, Shizun, 
I'm I'm so freaking worried about him. Like I I stopped reading for a little while, just because I heard the um the actual book translation, like the Don May, uh, is actually getting made into a re being released exactly like the um Mosheng Tongshu stories. So it's officially licensed and published, and it's coming out soon-ish. So I'm waiting for that. Also, I really want to watch the live action. <laughs> but no, because the parts, that you can already see the parts where Shizun is being hurt by his love for the moron that is moron. <laughs> <clears throat> but yes, pain. That wouldn't, that wouldn't, I feel, I feel like Urha is going to hurt more than any other Donmei that I've ever read. It's getting released. I'm so excited. I've, I've already, uh, not, I don't know if it's the official one that I've seen, but I know that I pre-ordered it on Amazon. So as soon as it does get the release, it's, it's coming home. But, uh, let me actually just look and have a look and see if it's. Show you the one that I've seen, and you tell me if it's the right one. I don't even know if that's the right pronunciation or spelling of it. Yeah, that's the right one. Urha novel. <coughs> yeah, this one. This is the only one that I've seen. This one. Ah, no, no, no. Sorry, baby. Did I wake you? Huh? What is wrong with my freaking thing? Stop moving. This cover. This is the only cover that I've seen, so I'm not sure if this is the real, oh, real thing. But that's all I've seen. <clears throat> I don't know if you can hear you. He's getting a drink. All my flailing. He comes over. Are you okay? <laughs> okay. Okay, we're over here. Mm -hmm. Her warning last time, even bringing up his birth mother, Liang Qi felt so dejected that she hadn't slept well for several days. In the past, whatever she said, Liu Wan Chang would simply heed. Who would have expected that Liu Wan Chang would protect his male wife who couldn't even come up with anything who couldn't even come up with anything in his belly? What a bitch. Oh, wow, really? Like, you can see his... Oh, it's cool. Let me see. I didn't delete it. I think I just minimized it. Let me just... Hold on. I'm just going to look at it in my big screen over here. Oh, shit, you're right. Oh, that's cool. I didn't even look at it properly. Because I'm never sure if these things are the real... Oh shit, look at that. Oh, that's a really cool feature. I didn't even realize that. I just, I worry about Shizun. I worry about him. He deserves so much. And I am i haven't gotten to the point where he's, where any of the goodness starts to happen. Because I know that eventually Moron has to turn the page and make, like, his entire world has to be um, Shizun. Right? Like, that's what we're all expecting. Like, he's a complete asshole most of the time. And then he's an asshole who's on a, a road of discovery to realize, oh, Shizun was a good after. So I want to see him realize, oh my god, I was such an asshole. How do I make Shizun life better? <laughs> Shizun's life better and, like, make him my entire world out of Shizun and... and give all that love and appreciation back to him because honest to goodness every single time she then comes on you've gotten to the goodness you bastard 
You said you were only halfway through. Oh, son of a bitch. I haven't gotten that far. I will... I will absolutely have to frigging... Ooh. I'm because genuinely be crying over him. I know. I get so upset every like every single time she's in ma makes one of those comments where I know I'm old or I know I'm not good looking or I'm you know I, I know that everyone hates me that kind of thing. I'm like oh my god it hits me right in the feels. <laughs> it's so well written to me. I know it is so incredibly well written. Um, I I started listening to it actually when i don't know if you've heard of the vtuber um kukulin and the house of copper hounds and that's actually where i got the idea to start this this channel and he was reading urha and his version of it was so flippin good he did such an incredible job i don't think he got through no sorry i should say i know he didn't get through all of it but i don't even think he got to the good wholesome bit it, i want to know okay because i'm a person who loves spoilers so i need you to tell me does moron make up for shizun's suffering that's my question because with all of shiz nope don't know what oh don't yeah you should uh because they actually they left the not the fandom but they got like a job so they are taking a year or two, a year off i think but yeah when as soon as they come back hells yes i will be all over like you everyone needs to listen to this person because they're awesome but yeah my biggest thing is the reason that i i dropped it is because there was so much suffering i was going is it even possible at this point for moron to make it up to shizun and it really worried me <laughs> so that's that that would be my question i don't think i can continue like can could pick it up again and continue it unless I know that yes all the suffering that Shizun goes through, Moron makes up for it it makes him feel like the most love in the whole world like that's that would be my stipulation <clears throat> have left it should be how many pages you have to oh, that means you're you're more than halfway through the book then oh is it finished are they because the last i've been out of it for so long that they weren't even finished posting it the translation <laughs> So I'm like 3,000 pages in and have 4,000 left. Is that... Really? It's only 3,000 pages until we get to the good stuff? So the, so the good stuff is more than half the novel? Yes, he does change. I agree that he does change. It is finished. Oh, it is finished. Okay. That's interesting. I will definitely have to pick it back up then. Hmm. Yeah, because I think we got up to something... Like, into the hundreds. But I don't think we went... I don't, I don't even know. I shouldn't say that. I don't remember what chapter we finished it on. But it felt like more than half the book was bad stuff. And that's the one thing that I like about the Mo Sheng Tong Shu fix, is that it... It jumps back and forth between the bad stuff and the good stuff. So you do know that the bad stuff will end, and so it helps to keep going through the books, even when it's awful. Like, some of the stuff is just awful. But you can keep going because you know that it gets better. And that's with, with Urha, I've struggled because I'm like, it has to get much better. <laughs> like, Shizun has to have a happy ending. Because I will fucking rage if he doesn't have a happy ending and i was getting so sad for him and moron was just being a complete moron and i didn't see him getting all that better but as long as he does although have you seen for the live action the um the clips that they've done of of shizun and and moron for the ghost wedding <laughs> have you seen those oh my god it's so good it's so good 
I don't know if I'm allowed to show things like that on here, but it's so cute because the f actual filming of it, and you see them because it's clearly the ghost wedding marriage. Now, they weren't in a box. <laughs> they were standing. But I think it's just the standing actually married part. I don't know how they're doing that. I don't even know if it'll get released with all the things going on with China and BL and and the bands and all that. But fingers crossed. I'm I'm here for it. Okay, where was I? <coughs> oh, yeah, it's so worth it. It's so good. What? What do you mean? What do you mean they're cutting out that scene? That's that's the best scene. Like it's so cute with them fighting over it. So cute. I love it. The, them fighting over the the sash, <laughs> whacking him. It's so cute. I'm like, oh my god, it's exactly like I pictured in the book. How did you find out that they're cutting it out, though? I imagine they're cutting out a lot of stuff, like, to be frank. They would have to. But it it makes me wonder how much... if Because it doesn't seem like they cut out a lot of stuff from uh, The Untamed. But I can imagine with all the stipulations and everything going on, the one I'm really worried about, the live action... It's going to be cut out because of censorship. Yeah, so with, with um, The Untamed, they got away with the wedding, their kind of wedding scene, but the bowing. Whereas outside of China, people are like, okay, well, they're bowing three times. No, but in China, they know that you bow three times to the ancestor's altar in a marriage. And so they could they could get away with that because it's like, oh, well, Westerners wouldn't understand. And I love Pub's Twitter and TikTok, yeah. Yeah, Instagram's my, my go-to. But I don't find, I only see the pictures of it. I don't get the juicy details. But yeah, I'm really worried about um, Heaven Official's blessing. Really worried about how that's going to turn out. <coughs> like, I'm hopeful, and I shall remain hopeful, but... I haven't seen I haven't seen what they would need to put out in order for it to be like the book. So so far it's just uh someone playing uh Shailan. Is it Shailan or Shailan? Where's this Shailan? Okay. You think about it, and I will interrupt myself as soon as you do. I'm going to, I want to try and get us through this a bit more. And, but yeah, so I'm, I, I live for spoilers. Like, tell me that it gets good at some point because, okay, the part that I was at, that I last left at was, and I just couldn't take any, <laughs> take any of the negativity anymore. Yes, I do. Just a moment. I'll post a link. But, um... I completely forget what I was saying. Where is my... Okay, try to see if this works. <clears throat> Does it show up as a link for you? I'm not sure if it would. Um, I will post a link also in the description, which I should already be doing, really. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, the Discord link, if it's not clickable... Oh, good. Good. Uh, if it's not clickable, I do have a website... And it's on the Let's Chat page of my website. Let me just copy and paste that. Ah. There's that too. Um, I cannot remember what I was saying. Oh, that's right. I was at the part where, um, where people had just arrived at the... Thank you. Uh, what is it? 
the sect. People had just arrived at the sect to accuse Shizun of murdering the Bird Clan. If that makes any kind of sense. <laughs> the Bird Warrior Clan. And they were accusing him. And everyone's like, no way, that can't fucking be true. And Shizun, I don't think, was saying anything. So I think that's where I left off with Urha. But yeah. They had just finished the... Oh, they had just met... Oh, I don't want to, um... To spoil it for people who are listening. Yeah, I won't spoil it for people who are listening. Dude, you're so close to everything going down. Fuck! <laughs> it gets worse, doesn't it? It gets worse before it gets better, doesn't it? Oh, I just know it. Okay, answer me this. You're the cusp of, like, really bad things happening. <laughs> That's exactly it. my instinct said no stop here it's, it's just badness from now on <laughs> that's too funny <laughs> I love that you this is all the bad things happening yeah it felt like it it felt like there was I wonder though if I could skip it <laughs> could I just what chapter do I go to could I just skip all the bad stuff because usually there's, the bad stuff is happening, and then there's a period of respite where the characters are just kind of realizing that this is the bad stuff, like it's a limbo, and then you have where they go on to the good stuff. If I could just get to the limbo bit that's right after all the bad stuff, I don't know. I just, I I had so many feels for Shizun when he was going through the regular shit, and then the bad shit's coming up. No, no, don't skip, trust me. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> no, no, don't skip. Uh, you, you, sh you promise it'd be worth my time, because I'm, I'm a sensitive being. Look at the finale of the first book. <sighs> Damn it! All right, I will pick it back up, but I'll finish this chapter first. You just convinced me that I have to finish it. I don't want to. I'm doing it under duress. Know this. Yes, I will. I just want to get to the... Okay. I'm going to ask you this. I'm going to ask you this, and I want straight answers. Straight answers. <laughs> Does Moron figure out about the wontons. Does he know? Does he find that out? Yes or no? Because honest to God, it's been bugging me the whole frickin' time. Sorry, baby. Did I wake you up? Sorry, hon. That's my question. Does Moron find out about Shizun's wontons? And for anyone listening, it's not in a sexual way. Get out of here. <laughs> okay, we're gonna go to this. <clears throat> okay. Who couldn't even come up with anything in his belly? Okay. She has lived the greater half of her life, and she has never seen any Shishong that actually chased away the sickness to bring the husband to health. She didn't believe in this kind of thing, which was why she could go around begging for marriage from the Lin family, putting on an act of displaying her motherly love in front of Master Hu. Had she known earlier, she would have hardened her heart and sent Liu Wancheng away early. Oh. Don't feel bad for him. Although, yeah, he was blinded by... Because I have a theory. And my theory so far has not been proven wrong. And I think I know who the bad guy is. Because bitch was suspect from the start. In my opinion. 
So if it's, if what I think is going to happen, I can understand feeling bad for Moron and being betrayed like that, but still an asshole. Although my theory is like a blood parasite thing. So yeah, I could understand that. Okay. Okay. 20 or 30. Oh, well, they're short chapters. That's fair. Um, Okay, I will pick it back up just to get to that part. Even though I have to go through all of this badness, you say, to get there. If I'm traumatized, I'm, I'm blaming you. <laughs> traumatized. I'm a sensitive bee. <clears throat> okay, so... Just to recap what's happening in this story, we now have confirmation that uh, Liang Shi doesn't like Lu Wan Chang and was trying to sabotage him, never believed in the Chiang Shi that getting married would help him, and if it had, she would have sent him away to begin with. That's where we are. <clears throat> Seeing Liang Shi's ugly expression, Liu Nan Tao called out, Mother? Liang Shi's brows furrowed. I might not be... Oh. Fuck. <laughs> that's... That's so mean. <laughs> Just for anyone listening to this who can't see it, Ghost Riot Wanderer says, If I'm traumatized. Bestie, it's not an if. Fuck. It's gonna hurt so bad. I can just imagine it's gonna hurt so bad. But I kind of want Moron to hurt. Please watching this, don't read Urha. Those who have already started, nah, you're stuck, you gotta finish. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I fucking agree with that. I do agree with that. Urha is a lot of trauma in one book. And if you have any kind of... I think it truly does hit on... If you have any kind of triggers, I think this, this book will hit everyone. You name a trigger, it's, it's in this book. It will happen at least once. But yeah, so it's... <laughs> That's that's actually really fair. That's, I'm going to read that louder. Viewers watching this, don't read Urha. Those who have already started, nah, you're stuck. Gotta finish. Yeah. I don't know. I'm nervous now. Huh. And the thing is, is that I, before with the person who, um... Kukulin, who was reading it on his stream, I would watch it or listen to it while I was walking the dog. It made for some really depressing walks. Like, I'm sure Yui picked up on, like, Mom's not happy about this. Why would... The walk seemed to take forever. <laughs> Liang Shi's brows furrowed. I might not be able to hold down the present Liu Wan Chang. That wasn't her voice at all. What the fuck was that? I might not be able to hold down the present Liu Wen Cheng. Liu Nantao smiled and said, Don't worry, mother. Father is a reasonable person. As long as reason is on your side, you have nothing to fear. Watch for this bitch. She's smarter. <coughs> Liu Nantao smiled and said, Oh, no, sorry. Let me just go back. Lu Momo clapped her hands. The second young lady's words have reached the heart of this slave. There is with it is with good intentions that you are cultivating Xiao Zhen. It is Xiao Zhen himself who proved to be incapable and unable to figure out the ledgers. Could this possibly still be reasonable? Liang Shi pulled herself together. What you say is but sensible. I have nothing to fear. 
Yes, you do, bitch. While they were talking, Lin Ching Yu pushed along Lu Wan Chang, walked in. Oh, pushing along Lu Wan Chang, walked in. Liang Shi smiled. You're here. Liu Nan Tao got up and saluted. Eldest brother, sister in law. Lin Ching Yu nodded and said nothing, while Lu An Chang followed with a very easy, with a very low pressure. Mm. Liang Shi and Liu Nang, Liu Nan Tang exchanged looks, not knowing where Lu An Chang's anger came from. Only Lin Ching Yu knew that Lu An Chang's anger came from his irritability in the mornings. Liu Momo didn't look too carefully and said, deliberately ambiguous, Young master is finally here after keep having kept the madam waiting. It was I who lazed in bed and he got up. What? What? Sorry. It was I who lazed about in bed and then he got up late. Liu Wan Chang raised his eyes and asked, and asked nonchalantly, Are you saying there's something the matter? Meeting Lu Wan Chang's gaze, Liu Momo flinched, assuming a well-behaved manner, as though she had been bullied. She said, This servant dares not. Liu Nan Tao asked, deeply concerned, Isn't elder brother already able to walk about? Why is he in a wheelchair again? Lin Ching Yu said calmly, He's too sleepy and too lazy to walk. Lu Wan Chang retorted, It's the Blue Wind Pavilion, it's too far from here. In the final analysis, it could be summed up with the word, Lazy. Fuck, I love him. <laughs> <clears throat> Lin Ching Yu didn't want to waste time with Liang Shi and the others. Without waiting for Liang Shi to speak, he went straight to the matter at hand. Huan Tong. Huan Tong presented the ledgers to Liang Shi. Our family's young master has already sorted out all the ledgers, asking Madam to please look it through it. Though it was not apparent from Liang Shi's face, but inwardly, she was filled with misgivings. This young man was acting so bold and assured. Could it be that Lin Ching Yu really finished sorting out the month's accounts in three days? The servants of the Blue Wind Pavilion clearly said that Lin Ching Yu had been reading books and dispensing medicines as usual for the past three days. Where did he find the time to sort out these ledgers? Liu Momo had the same idea as her. She whispered, Madam, why don't you take a look? You'll know once you do. Liang Shi leafed through the account book, and with every page she turned, her sense of oppression grew. After looking at only half the book, a chill had already gone through her heart, though she still forced a smile on her face. These accounts are sorted out in proper order. You've handled everything thoroughly. As expected of Ching Yu. Lin Ching Yu said, Madam flatters me. Liu Momo's face changed. She almost blurted out the words, How is it possible? Fortunately, she was stopped by the look in Liang Chi's eyes, and she changed her words. Madam, how about you take a closer look? Liang Shi was someone who knew the accounts. She'd been managing the household for almost 20 years. At a glance, she knew that this husband and wife came prepared. Even just doing it in such neat order, even the Hu, Mansion, Hu Mansion's bookkeeper might not be able to do it. How was this possible? No one in the Blue Wind Pavilion understood the accounts. How were they actually able to accomplish this? Liang Shi was feeling agitated, and she no longer had a good expression when facing Liu Momo. 
I didn't look at it closely enough. Why don't you come and see? Liu Nantao pondered for a long time and said with a smile, I hear that this is the first time sister-in-law has come in contact with household matters, and he is unexpectedly able to do it so perfectly. Mother, you can rest assured that you can hand over the duties of the household to sister-in-law in the future. That seems reasonable. Liu Wancheng smiled subtly. After mother has handled, handed over everything, she can start living her life in ease and comfort. <coughs> Liu Nantao said, Elder brother and sister-in-law are really filial. Speaking of which, sister-in-law also has a highly retentive memory. He must have remembered all the things on these ledgers. Liang Shi's eyes lit up. She glanced at her daughter with admiration and then said, In this case, allow me to give you a test, Jing Yu. Liu Wan Chang raised his eyebrows. He was about to get up, but Lin Qingyu held him down by his shoulders. Qingyu? Hey, you had a paragraph? I think my paragraph didn't make it onto the library card. I, I think... I think I need to make my chat either... Make the card bigger or the font smaller. I read everything. Did I miss something? Did I miss something? Jing Yu? Lin Jing Yu said, Let her give the test. Oh, that's weird. Let me have a look. Because it's not showing up in my stream chat on here. I don't understand. Okay, no worries. Let me have a look on mine. It's showing up on mine, but let me see. Do 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 do. Okay. I don't have anything showing up on my Twitch stream chat. I have the viewers watching this don't read Urha, and then whoa, I think my paragraph didn't make it. And then I have a paragraph that's not showing on the library card. But it's a normal Twitch, and then I don't understand. Those are all I have on my end. I don't have any others. But if you want to try sending it again, I can do it. Or if it's not working and you want to copy paste it into Discord, I can read it. You can do it that way. <coughs> you let me know. You'll never know, I guess. <laughs> oh, it's nose. Now I'm I'm curious. What was it about? Now I am curious. I'll cut it now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, where am I here? Let her give her test. Liang Shi opened the account book and asked, watch Lin Qing Yu be badass, and asked, how many stores did our, does our Nan and Hu Mansion have in the capital? 26 stores. Among them, there are three banks, Three restaurants, two tea shops, two silk cloth shops, two porcelain shops. Which village had the best harvest last month? Xu Yang Village, 20 miles out of the suburbs of the capital. Liang Shi's tone became impatient. 
The Hell Mansion in Jiu... In Jiu... 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 The Who Mansion in Jiu... Jiu has... In total, there are five silk cloth shops and a total loss of 1,300 teals last month. Tails last month. Then Ching Yu said carelessly, If I remember correctly, Liang Shi's ancestral home is in Xiaoju. Xiaoju. Uh, let me read what has been said here. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to read this shit. I'm going to read this, okay. So this is from Ghost Wander on Discord, continuing our Urha chat for anyone who's just uh, tuned in. Here, right, we'll run now. Himbo. <laughs> oh my god, that's actually perfect. <laughs> Let's carry on with our face clothes. Okay, I'm going to read this at the end. I'm going to continue on with this. <laughs> and then I'm going to read this, this message at the end. So that we can continue our Urha chat. I like calling them lazy lovers. <clears throat> also, if it didn't come uh, across earlier, this uh, Lin Ching Yu, he's like one of those geniuses where they see it once and then they memorize it. Yeah, there's no fool in this bitch. Okay, that was in your home in Shuzhou. Liang Shi slowly put down the ledger. With extreme difficulty, she managed to squeeze out a smile. You have indeed remembered everything perfectly. Seeing Liu Momo unable to utter even a single fart, Kua Tong wanted to exchange a cheerful look with young Master Hu. Their young master could read obscure medical books and memorize them forwards and backwards, what a magnificent little ledger. Oh, sorry. What an insignificant little ledger. Liang Shi was really thick-skinned. Mm -hmm. Photographic memory. He's got this. <clears throat> but young Master Hu wasn't looking anywhere in his direction. He had his eyes quietly trained on their family's young master. There was a smile in his eyes when he said, it's, uh, 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 Liu Wang Chang is looking at, um, Lin Ching Yu as he's staring at him lovingly. Not in a gateway though, apparently. <laughs> there was a smile in his eyes and it overflowed with light as though he were somewhat proud. Lin Ching Yu said, does madam have anything else to ask? Liang Shi forcibly raised her spirits. N no, no more. Liu Wan Chang said to Lin Ching Yu, You go back first. I still have something to say to mother. Lin Ching Yu glanced at Liang Shi. He then looked away and left with Hua Tong. Liu Nan Tao got up as well and said with a smile, I'll go and see sister-in-law out. Platonically respectfully. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, um, I'm so, I'm honestly, I'm looking forward to the next lives. Because <laughs> I think some shit starts to happen. Wait till you see who he turns into. Although it says who he turns into in the description. But yeah. Apart from the servants who were serving in the hall, only Liu Wan Chang and Lin and Liang Shi were left. Liang Shi held up the teacup to conceal her anxiety. What else does Wang Chi have to say? Liu Wan Chang raised his head. I'd like to stand when talking to mother. Can mother help me? Liang Shi froze, then said, How can I not? Ever since you were a child, it was already it was already I who carried you to grow up. She stepped forward and helped Luan Chang up. 
The two stood face to face and she only reached up to Lu Cheng's shoulders. It created the illusion of being suppressed. Mother actually needn't worry, Lu Cheng said slowly. I am terminally ill. Even if Hua To were to spring back to life, his medicines would have no effect. And Xiong Yu isn't looking through his books for me. The medicine he makes is also not for me. Even if it were, he wouldn't be able to save me. Liang Shi's eyes kept dodging around. This child, what are you talking about? There was a smile at, his, at the corners of Lu Chang's lips. I don't have much time. I have less than half a year left. I just want to eat, drink, and look at beautiful women. He slowly approached Liang Shi. Can I, mother? Liang Shi... Liang Shi was forced to retreat again and again until she had nowhere to go. Dejected, she slumped to a sit. She held tightly to the corner of the table. Her lips covered behind her fingers were pale. With a trembling voice, she said, I... Young Master Ho, what are you doing? Sorry, it's, it's late here and I've got beside me so I can't do it really as I should, but... Young Master Ho, what are you doing? Liu Momo wanted to step forward to stop him. The madam is, her, is the head mistress of the family. How can young Master Hu be so impolite? Liu Wan Chang shot her a glance, rays of hostility condensing between his eyebrows. Did I allow you to speak? The leg Liu Mo Mo had out to take the first step suddenly went weak. It also felt like it was nailed in place. It was as though something was clutching her throat, and she didn't even dare to pant. Except for her, all the other servants stood quietly aside. No one dared to step forward to help the mistress of the house. The hall was deathly silent. After a long time, Liu Wan Chang turned back to Liang Shi and said with a smile, Mother, you haven't answered me yet. Liang Shi's expression twisted in panic, and an indistinct voice issued from her throat. You... can. Liuan Chang curled his lips and smiled. Thank you, mother. Not long after, Lin Qingyu returned to the Blue Wind Pavilion. Not long after Lin, Lin Qingyu returned to the Blue Wind Pavilion, Liuan Chang also returned. Looking exhausted, he coughed several times. Since the weather got warmer, Liu Cheng's cough had obviously improved a lot. Why was he coughing again? Liu Cheng himself paid it no mind. Maybe it's because I was talking a bit too pretentiously just now? Lin Qingyu asked, What did you say to Liang Shi? Nothing. I just told her to behave a bit. That's all. Then Ching Yu didn't ask much. Give me your hand. Let me examine your pulse. Liu Wan Ching stretched out his hand and yawned. Dr. Lin? What? Liu Wan Cheng rubbed his eyes with the back of his other hand. Time for Betty Bai. Lin Ching Yu was momentarily speechless. How old are you? You still use baby talk. Fine. Then Ching Liu Wencheng changed his tune and said leisurely, With the warm spring breeze, drowsiness, and unexpected attack, your husband in his bed, he would like to get back. The great beauty was in... The great beauty was indifferent. If you're too lazy to walk, then roll. Young Master Hu vomited vomiting blood. I'm moving, I'm moving. Are you still not satisfied? So yeah. Am I a Demon Slayer fan? I liked the first season. 
but I'm one of those where if there's no romance, I don't care. And I know how bad that sounds, but if I can't ship it, I'm like, eh. It was poetic, wasn't it? <laughs> I want someone to see that get tattooed. With the warm spring breeze, drowsiness, an unexpected attack. Your husband in his bed, he would like to get back. It was more like a Dr. Seuss rhyme. <laughs> so there we have it. There's chapters. That was four chapters in just under four hours. I think we did pretty good considering the tangent that we went on with Urha. And I do want to read this as I promised that I would. Uh... So where I'm at with Moran and Shizun, I don't think Moran has made it up to Shizun completely yet, but, 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 the author pulled the miraculous move of, at this point, I genuinely don't harbor, like, any active negative feelings for Moran. That's surprising, because it was, mm. um, it's, it's so surprising, because I used to be so upset with him for Shizun, but he's been harboring so much self-hatred for how he's treated Shizun and has changed and put so much effort in being better. You can't help but feel for him. Like he's such a better person now. I would probably agree. I think... I don't hate Moron. I just think that he's had a lot against him. And I feel irritated that he didn't see through it. Thank you for the chapter readings. Um, so yeah, so if you're uh, new to the uh, the new people watching, I read every Wednesday evening and Sunday evening. Um, Wednesdays are 80% chance that I'll show up, but I'll always put it on Twitter if it's a no-go the day before. I haven't seen Good Moron yet. This is true. He's a himbo. <laughs> but if he's a himbo to absolutely catering to everything, she's, all of Shizen's needs, I'm okay with that. He's a bit dumb. He is a bit dumb. That's why he's moron. But yeah, so, um, but every Sunday night, Sundays are in stone. Um, come the summertime, I do go down to the cottages, so my weekends are full. Um, but Wednesdays should be, to put, Wednesdays are like set in plaster, and Sundays are set in stone, if that makes sense. I will always be here on Sunday evenings. Um, if you don't know, um, this, I created this channel for it to be like, um, a safe space, a constant place, that kind of thing. So it's like every Sunday, if you need something, to, someone just to help wind you down or somewhere to spend some time, come on over because we'll be here. And it's usually 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time is when we start. Just stream every night. I would actually love to. I would love to. Uh, I also have my podcast that I have to work on. And... Until I can afford to hire an editor, that takes a lot of my time. These don't take up that much time. I would love to keep doing these because I love the just reading and putting it out and that's great. Uh, but with the podcast, it's all edited and proper. It's a proper ed audiobook. Uh, so that takes a lot more time. That's, that's all, honestly, that's my background. I'm a professional uh, audiobook narrator. Um, and professional in that, I get paid for it. <laughs> Whenever you hear someone get... It, that's how you judge a professional. Are you getting paid for it? You're a professional. It's all in the mindset. Um, but yeah, I'm voice actor, narrator, but I'm not a freaking editor, so it takes me a very long time. Uh, but yeah, so every Wednesday... I may add more days... But right now, the way my schedule goes is I have a brick and mortar job that I go to Mondays to Wednesdays. And so that's why Wednesday evening, I can usually uh, read a few chapters. Uh, what was I going to say? Uh, oh yeah, so I usually record for the podcast Monday evening. Well, usually I try to get it done on Saturdays, but that's not happening. 
So Monday evening I record for the my podcast, edit it Monday through Thursday, and then we stream on Wednesday night, stream on Sunday night, and I hope to sometimes get Fridays and Saturdays off. We'll see if that actually happens. We don't know. Um, let me go to... Okay, let's, let me make sure the music doesn't get too loud. Ta-da! Something should be singing here. Oh, there's a happy Yui. There we go. Calm him down. Where's the wake? Oh, is the music cra crazy loud? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Is it back up? Jinkies, oh no, oh no. Can you hear me? It says that you should be able to hear me. Can't hear me, she can. Maybe what? Can you hear me now? What the heck was that? Why did it do that? That's so weird. See, there's so many bugs. I've got a new system that I'm just learning. And the amount of times that it craps out on me is really frustrating. So as I was saying, um, <clears throat> I am on, uh, I always post on both Twitter and Discord when I'm going to go live. And if you want to reach me, again, Twitter and Discord are the easiest. And uh, so yeah, I'm going to sign off. And thank you so much for Ghost Wonder for visiting, for hanging out with me. And thank you to my other viewers who are hanging out in the background. I do see you and I appreciate you. All right. And I will see you all hopefully next Wednesday. All right. Have a great night, everyone. Thank you for joining me. And we will see you again next time. Have a good night. <laughs>